हाँ हाँ डेली ऑल्सो इज फॉर लास्ट थ्री फोर डेज इट इज रियली रेनिंग एंड कोल्ड ऑल्सो and uh, one of uh, other colleagues also you are telling that he will be joining yeah he will be i just sent him forwarded to him also the invitation his name is ashok vasudevan okay he has okay. been very very successful in the agro field acha acha he had bought a bankrupt company from hindustan levers acha all tasty bites okay okay um, which mm-hmm. which was after building it up for 20 years was bought by a japanese agro company and then by the american company and uh, okay a very okay. very successful business model okay. and now he is also helping he is based in singapore and helping uh, quite a lot uh-huh. of companies startup companies so i so i okay. forward i suggested to you to send an invite to him he'll be joining uh-huh. us Okay. 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 Sure. Sure. In sure. fact, he will be joining with a couple of his uh, colleagues. Okay. Wonderful. 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 He is in Singapore. <laughs> okay. He is in Singapore. Ajay Tha. Come, uh, Bhai Kamla Nandji. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Shalini ji. Welcome, Shalini ji. i had informed uh, actually uh, manish ji also singapore chamber of commerce vice chairman i don't know whether he was scheduled somewhere to be <laughs> present so welcome sir uh yeah sudanshu ji keep keep admitting people because you know there are lot of people coming yes yes i i am uh, taking ah, care yeah. ah, oh, yeah. oh, yes, very nice very nice yeah. we have two uh, high tech uh, it technocrats supporting us you know in joining and managing this anurodh ji and sudhanshu ji <laughs> Anil Bhatji, welcome. Acha, yes, twenty-two others. That means this is from uh, I think uh, Shere Kashmir uh, University. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, ah, ah wonderful, very nice. Hmm. Prav Pravakar Ji, welcome. Ah, uh, ah, you are you are muted, Pravakar Ji. You are you are saying something. We are not able to hear. Mute, unmute. Yeah, yeah. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, and I welcome all the members of the conference. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Prabhakar from Advanced Biotech Research Project. Prabhakar, Prabhakar is a wonder man. Wonder man for the, uh, you know, uh, I'd say in uh, today's subject. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Ulsian ji, welcome. Yeah, six minutes. So uh, I think four ten पे हम लोग start करते हैं because the thirty seven have joined another three four minutes we just wait. I think that is okay. Sir, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sanji. Ji. Yeah. We will follow your instructions, Sanji sir. You are senior most from IIT Kanpur alumni. <laughs> <laughs> I I I am here to listen. मेरा कंट्रीब्यूशन ये होगा कि मैं कैंची से काट दूंगा जी. बहुत अच्छा इनिशिएटिव आपने लिया है. बहुत सारे लोगों का ये इम्प्रेशन है कि फार्मिंग में घाटा ही होता है फायदा तो बहुत कम लोगों को होता है इनफैक्ट पता नहीं औरों को मालूम है या नहीं मालूम है कि हम लोग के एक आईआईटी कानपुर का एक व्हाट्सएप का ग्रुप है जिसमें बड़ी डिबेट चल रही थी कि भाई ये फार्मिंग लॉ जो है वो एंटी फार्मर्स है और 
घाटा ही होता है बेचारों को ऊपर से ये सब दैट इज अ बैकग्राउंड जिसको लेकर कि ये सब चीजें स्टार्ट हुई और जब रविंद्र जी ने ये कहा कि नहीं ऐसा नहीं है मैं जानता हूं जो कि लोग सक्सेसफुली फार्मिंग कर रहे हैं और मैं चाहूंगा कि आप उनसे ज्ञान प्राप्त करें या मतलब समझें कि भाई ऐसा नहीं है कि फार्मिंग में लॉस होना जरूरी है इफ यू डू प्रॉपरली फार्मिंग साइंटिफिक वे में तो घाटा नहीं होगा फायदा होगा सो वी वर ऑल इंटरेस्टेड कि भाई वाई डोंट यू इंट्रोड्यूस देम टू एस और उनसे ज्ञान प्राप्त करते हैं और एक शुरुआत होगी बहुत से लोग इंटरेस्टेड होते हैं लेकिन उनको फार्मिंग लॉज नहीं मालूम है उनको ये नहीं मालूम जैसे कि मेरा ये इंप्रेशन है कि भारत में किसी भी एग्रीकल्चर लैंड को खरीदना बहुत ही मुश्किल है और तमिलनाडु में आसान है बहुत सी चीजें हैं जो हम लोग को मालूम नहीं है बहुत से लोग इंटरेस्टेड हैं फार्मिंग में लेकिन दे डू नॉट नो द ए बी सी की स्टार्ट कहाँ से करें रविंद्र जी ने ये जो सभा बुलाई है आई एम श्योर हम सब लोग को उससे बहुत फायदा होगा दो मिनट बचे हैं चार बज के दस में और दो मिनट बाद मेरे को दो मिनट में पचास की संख्या दो मिनट बाद ये चीज जो है वो रिबन को काटे सर बार रेडी हम लोग दो मिनट बाद जो है पचास की संख्या पूरी कर लेंगे वैसे <laughs> यहाँ पे मेरे एक फ्रेंड हैं शिव कुमार जी वो भी वो चेन्नई के पास जी. रहते हैं और वो फार्मिंग खुद कर रहे हैं वो भी मेरे साथ दुबई में थे दुबई से आकर वो यहाँ पर अपने नेटिव जगह चले गए और वहां पे फार्मिंग कर रहे हैं तो ही इज आल्सो कीनली इंटरेस्टेड इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस आई सी हिज नेम आई डोंट सी हिज इज नॉट ऑन वीडियो ही इज देयर सर आई ही इज देयर या आई हैड इंटरेक्टेड आल्सो विद हिम ही वाज द सेकंड पर्सन टू जॉइन इन फैक्ट आई इज कम आई एम हियर आई एम हियर आई एम शिप यार thanks for uh, sending me yeah. this uh, link yeah. very nice yeah. Yeah. seems to be distinguished a uh, lot of people yeah. <laughs> very happy to be with this group yeah yeah, yeah. look forward yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 aur uh, main sabse anurodh karunga ki jahan tak mera khayal hai vin ji ki jab ek bar conference start ho jayegi to hum sab log ko apna mic off kar dena chahiye ha mute kar denge us samay ha सर आ गए हैं प्रोफेसर जे पी शर्मा जी तो हम लोग शुरुआत कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो फिर मैं रविंद्र जी आपसे अनुराध अनुरोध करूंगा कि आप शुभारंभ करें ठीक है सर ठीक 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 है सो so, हम लोग शुरुआत करेंगे पहले आ, एक ऋग्वेद का मंत्र सुधांशु जी से मैं आग्रह करूंगा कि ऋग्वेद का मंत्र जो है आ, शुरू करें अनम्यूट कर लीजिएगा सुधांशु जी बाकी लोग हम लोग म्यूट कर सकते हैं ऑडिबल यस यू आर ऑडिबल क्या हो गया साउंड का सुधांशु एक मिनट या एक मिनट एक मिनट राजा भूयासम ओदना मुद्रवते परमेष्ठी वाषा यदोदन अर्थात नदिया बहे और गगन बरसे वर्षा हो औषधियाँ पौधे फल फूल इत्यादि प्रकृति लदी रहें से 
और अन्न का दुग्ध का जिस प्रकार उत्पादन करने वाले और अन्न उत्पादन करने वाले सभी जंतु उन सब के हितैषी बनू और सामने परोसा गया अन्न ईश्वर की ओर से एक अनमोल उपहार है और इसके सेवन से उच्चतम स्तर की समृद्धि और कल्याण की प्राप्ति हो ऐसी परिकल्पना वैदिक दृष्टि से की गई रविंद्र जी आपका अनम्यूट ये अनम्यूट कर दिया ये इको कर रही है क्यों अभी ठीक है ओके शेर कश्मीर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी के वाइस चांसलर रेस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर जेपी शर्मा जी एक्स वाइस चांसलर ऑफ पालनपुर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी से प्रोफेसर अशोक सरियाल जी बहुत सीनियर रिटायर्ड आई ऑफिसर भाई कमलानंद तावड़ी जी डॉक्टर प्रभात कुमार जी पूसा के वरिष्ठ रिसर्च स्कॉलर रिसर्च प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अमित गोस्वामी जी श्री सत्यनारायण द्विवेदी जी वन सीनियर इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट श्री संजय विद्यार्थी जी श्री कार्तिक जयरमन जी श्री डी के प्रभाकर जी वेरी सीनियर ऑफिसर्स एंड रेस्पेक्टेड पीपल फ्रॉम एंटायर कंट्री एंड अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड स्पेशली श्री मुराडिया जी हुए ज्वाइन फ्रॉम पेरिस दिस इज एन ऑनर टू वेलकम यू ऑल इन टू डेज फर्स्ट एग्रीकॉन webinar a very hearty welcome to all of you sadar naman sadar vandan actually india used to be a food deficient country earlier now it has become food surplus country the food products will always remain a necessity as long as the humanity exists so as the time passes we also have to modify renovate reinforce and change ourselves to adopt various techniques to produce the agricultural <clears throat> products process them and the entire supply chain management has to be applied in a way that makes the food produce the agriculture and related things into a surplus industry earlier it, it it was not basically part of the you know uh, what you call jivika sadhan for the people but now it has become a jivika sadhan also for most of the people earlier it was mainly centered in the villages now it has in fact uh, crossed across the country whether it is hills this is uh, there is a production in sea there is in desert in hills in wet uh, places and everywhere you know this uh, production has to take place and it has become very important even for the survival of the people so this is high time 
that we start discussing deliberating planning uh, some kind of methodology which attracts the right people because it is the most important thing probably for the survival of the humanity so we need to look into various aspects whether it is starts from the seed processing or it is cultivation storage transportation losses in various activities all these things have to be, you know addressed properly to make them profitable useful and that is why it is said you know in our ancient uh, books you know people have said uttam kheti madhyam ban kheti or farming is one of the best activities which you can do because you not only just serve yourself but you serve the humanity so i don't want to take much time in this uh, we we have kept in fact more time for the uh, interactions with the people and uh, less time for the presentations so that our speakers can devote and address the questions which are raised by the audience <coughs> and as the time passes many more people will join so with this i would uh, request uh, sashank to present a brief genesis of agricultural scenario in india in the re retrospect over to sashank Namaste, everyone. Uh, good evening, esteemed speakers and respected participants. I will here present very briefly a historical overview of the agriculture scenario in India and how it relates to the present circumstances. So, uh, participants, historically, India has had a very favorable land to population ratio, and therefore, there has been enough land for everyone to cultivate, even technologically. As late as 17th century, several European travelers who visited India testified that the technology that has been used in India was akin to uh, that used in uh, Europe at that time. However, things began to change during the colonial period, and uh, there was a ruralization of the Indian economy. As a result, India <clears throat> there was a severe food shortage, and we underwent several famines. as a result when india became independent india was import dependent in food production in the 1960s a famine like situation prevailed in india due to which the government of india was forced to undertake the green revolution uh, the the policy was well thought of india adopted a production centered agriculture policy as a result india became a food surplus nation within a few decades however it had several drawbacks <laughs> uh the environment the soil quality of um, uh, deteriorated uh, the water table declined substantially and input costs have risen as a result farming has had become uh, financially unviable for a large uh, uh, small and marginal farmers who account for almost 87% of the total farmers that we have in india uh the present dis dispensation has identified this anomaly in the policy regime and has brought about a paradigm shift from a production center to a price centric agriculture policy uh the focus on doubling farmers income has been uh, is a extension of the same uh, recently the ashok dalwai committee had been set up and it envisioned a very important role for agripreneurs in the whole agriculture uh, setup uh in this light from the policy push that the government has given and the fact that there is a vast unrealized potential in the agriculture sector uh agripreneurship is the next big thing in indian economy and therefore the conference that we have today is very much pertinent to the current uh, scenario and the years coming forward thank you thank you shishank so uh Right. with this background in fact you know we have with us uh, professor jp sharma uh, who has done his uh, graduation from the jp pant university and phd from iit delhi and also post doctorate from the un dp related uh, institution he has done lot of things in fact in developing the agripreneurship in india 
he is one of the uh, forerunners uh, you know if we say that he is the uh, what you call father of horticulture if you permit me to say that yeah the shop ki nahi hogi sir aapke liye so uh, and uh, in spite of so much of your busyness and very very short notice you have given your uh, valuable time to us we are extremely grateful to you and we look forward to listen to your views so that we can formulate our strategies further sir over to you sir thank you uh, thank you sir thank you रविंद्र जी बहुत बहुत आपका धन्यवाद आपने हमें इस कार्यक्रम में जुड़ने का मौका दिया और यहाँ पे बहुत ही सभ्रांत और हमारे सभी जानकार हैं लोग आपने अशोक सरियल साहब का नाम लिया कमल तारी साहब से मैं बहुत 2004 से जुड़ा हुआ था जब आप तारी साहब प्लानिंग कमीशन में थे और डॉक्टर प्रभात कुमार जी और अमित गोस्वामी जी मेरे सहकर्मी रहे हैं जब मैं पूसा इंस्टीट्यूट में था और अभी भी हमारे छोटे भाई स्वरूप हैं संजय जी जो बहुत ही संजय विद्यार्थी जी जो बहुत बड़े एंटरप्रेन्योर खुद में हैं वो भी यहाँ पे जुड़े हुए हैं और आपने बताया कि देश विदेश के बहुत गणमान्य व्यक्ति इसमें हैं मैं ये बात करना चाहूँगा कि जो अभी एक हमारे साथी ने कहा था और आपने भी कहा था कि पहले हम बात करते थे उत्तम खेती मध्यम बान निश्चित चाकरी भीक निदान अब वो परिभाषा बदल गई है और सरकार को लोगों को स्टूडेंट्स को एग्रीकल्चर में रखने के लिए युवाओं को एग्रीकल्चर में रखने के लिए एक कार्यक्रम भी चलाना पड़ा है जिसको हम कहते हैं आरिया अट्रैक्टिंग एंड रिटेनिंग रूरल यूथ यानी कि अब ये नौबत आ गई है कि उनको खेती में रखने के लिए सरकार को ये योजनाएँ चलानी पड़ रही हैं तो मैं पहले आपको बताना चाहूँगा कि खेती का ये एग्रीकल्चर की स्ट्रेंथ क्या है हमारे कंट्री में इस तरह से जो है ये जैसे मैं कहूं कि ये एग्रीकल्चर का जो अभी शेयर है जो जीडीपी है उसमें ट्वेंटी पॉइंट समथिंग है और ये हम शेयर की बात करते हैं तो ये शेयर डायरेक्ट है और यदि हम वैल्यू एडेड प्रोडक्ट की बात करते हैं तो जीडीपी में जो है एग्रीकल्चर का शेयर करीब फोर्टी सेवन परसेंट है क्योंकि जो कुछ भी चीज़ हम देख रहे हैं वो तो ज़्यादातर चीज़ें जो है एग्रीकल्चर से आती हैं इसका जो डायरेक्ट एम्प्लॉयमेंट में शेयर है एग्रीकल्चर का वो 46 परसेंट है और एक्सपोर्ट हालांकि संख्या में तो ज़्यादा है लेकिन शेयर अभी भी एक्सपोर्ट में हमारा कम है 2.15 परसेंट है यदि हम 1950 के दशक से आज की कृषि को देखें तो 1950 में जो हमारा प्रोडक्शन था सिर्फ 50 मिलियन टन था और आज वो बढ़ के हॉर्टिकल्चर प्रोडक्ट जो हमारा थ्री हंड्रेड के करीब मिलियन टन हो गया है और फूड ग्रेन का प्रोडक्शन जो हमारा 307 मिलियन टन है जो कि 1950 में सिर्फ 50 मिलियन टन था तो आप देख सकते हैं कि उस समय आबादी 30 करोड़ थी आज 135 करोड़ है तो जिस अनुपात से जो आबादी बढ़ी है उससे कहीं ज्यादा जो है हमारा प्रोडक्शन बढ़ा है आज के समय में हम लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर हैं स्पाइसिस के पल्सिस के मिल्क के पी के कैशू के और चूट के और हमारा सेकंड लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर में नंबर आता है वीट राइस फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स शुगर कैन कॉटन एंड ऑयल सीड्स में तो इस तरह से हम आप देखें और ये भी कब संभव हो पाया कि हमारे पास जो है वर्ल्ड का वी हैव ओनली 2.4 परसेंट एरिया ऑफ वर्ल्ड लैंड एंड वी हैव ओनली 4 परसेंट वाटर रिसोर्स ऑफ दर्ल्ड विद दिस टू पॉइंट ऑफ लैंड वी आर फीडिंग एटीन परसेंट ऑफ वुमेन पॉपुलेशन एंड अराउंड ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ लाइफ स्टॉक पॉपुलेशन तो ये खुशी की बात है कि ये टू पॉइंट फोर परसेंट जमीन से हम जो है अठारह परसेंट लोगों को फीड कर रहे हैं और अभी जो है एट्टी मिलियन टन से ज़्यादा हमारे पास में सरप्लस है तो जो एग्रीकल्चर मूव की है डिफिसिट से सरप्लस के रूप में आ गई है और आज की डेट में हमारे पास कितना बड़ा जो है सरप्लस है और हम अब बात कर रहे हैं प्रोडक्शन मैनेजमेंट तो ठीक है अब हम बात कर रहे हैं कि किस तरह से सरप्लस को मैनेज किया जाए सरप्लस मैनेजमेंट की अब जो अभी बात हो रही थी हमारे साथी ने एक बात बताई थी कि किस तरह से जो लैंड अवेलेबिलिटी है वो हमारी कम होती जा रही है 1970 की मैं बात करूं तो 2.73 हेक्टेयर जो है प्रति परिवार लैंड की उपलब्धता थी जो घट के 2001 में सिर्फ वन रह गई और आज हमारे पास जो है वन पॉइंट है प्रति परिवार और हम इसे विश्व के उससे कंपेयर करें 
तो हमारे पास 0.12 हेक्टेयर पर हेक्टा है अगेंस्ट 0.29 पर कैप पर कैपिटा एवेलेबिलिटी एट द वर्ल्ड लेवल और हमारे यहां इंडिया में 85% स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर हैं और आपको जानकर आश्चर्य होगा कि 23% ऐसे फार्मर हैं जिनके पास में सिर्फ 200 स्क्वायर मीटर ऑफ लैंड है बहुत छोटी एक हॉल के बराबर लैंड है तो अब ये हमें विवस करता है ये चीज सोचने को कि किस तरह की एग्रीकल्चर हमारी होनी चाहिए 86% अराउंड 86% स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर एंड 23% ऑफ द फार्मर्स आर हैविंग ओनली 200 स्क्वायर मीटर ऑफ लैंड तो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर वी हैव टू सजेस्ट वाटर अवेलेबिलिटी की हम बात करें दिन प्रतिदिन वाटर अवेलेबिलिटी क्योंकि दो ही चीजें हैं एग्रीकल्चर के लिए एक तो लैंड है जो बेसिक है और एक है वाटर 1950 में प्रति हेक्टेयर पर ईयर अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ वाटर वाज 5000 क्यूबिक मीटर पर ईयर नाउ इट हैज डिक्लाइन टू ओनली 1600 और आपने दो साल पहले सुना होगा कि चेन्नई जो मद्रास का जो ग्राउंड लेवल वाटर है वो करीब-करीब खत्म हो गया था इसी तरह से पंजाब और हरियाणा जहां राइस वीट क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम है हर साल किसान को अपनी वाटर लिफ्टिंग के लिए मोटर को लोअर करने के लिए 40-50000 रुपए खर्च करने पड़ते हैं और उनकी सोइल क्वालिटी बहुत डिटेरिएट होती जा रही है साल्ट जो है एक्यूमुलेट होते जा रहे हैं तो ये एक प्रॉब्लम सोइल की भी और वाटर की वाटर का जैसे मैंने बताया वी हैव ओनली 4.2% ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वाटर इसी तरह से कॉस्ट जो है हमारी इंक्रीज होती जा रही है बायोडायवर्सिटी का लॉस होता जा रहा है और थर्ड चीज लैंड कम हो रही है पानी कम हो रहा है और सबसे बड़ी चीज जो हमारा युवा है एनएसएस और डाटा सेज दैट 44% ऑफ द फार्मर्स आर विलिंग टू लीव एग्रीकल्चर इट इज नॉट 44 इट इज नॉट 60 इट इज नॉट 90 जब हम गांव में जाते हैं युवाओं से बात करते हैं तो करीब-करीब ऑल द यूथ रूरल यूथ इज विलिंग टू लीव एग्रीकल्चर इफ दे आर प्रोवाइडेड बाय सम वायबल अल्टरनेटिव तो ये सिनेरियो हमारी एग्रीकल्चर का आज की डेट में है अब जो हमारा फोकस है और पॉलिसी सपोर्ट भी है वो है प्रोडक्टिव की जैसे अभी बात हुई थी डबलिंग द फार्मर सेंट्रल डबलिंग नहीं उससे ज्यादा भी हो सकती है और उसका ये जो है हमारा जो तो प्रोडक्टिविटी को तो बढ़ाना ही है और अब जो बात हो रही है वो प्रोडक्शन से थोड़ा हटके भी हो रही है प्रोडक्शन टू प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी है हमारा फोकस है और जो भी गवर्नमेंट के अभी जो प्रोग्राम्स चल रहे हैं जिन पे फोकस है वो इनकम ओरिएंटेड है कि किस तरह से उनकी आमदनी बढ़ाई जाए और दूसरा जो किसान है उसका जो स्तर है जो सोशल रिकॉग्निशन है उसको कैसे बढ़ाया जाए हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने एक स्लोगन दिया था कि किसान की आमदनी नहीं उसका स्वाभिमान कैसे बढ़ाया जाए तो अब इस पे बात हो रही है कि क्या एग्रीकल्चर जो में इंटरेस्ट लूज होता जा रहा है हमारे युवा ने आ पा रहे तो क्या एग्रीकल्चर को एक ऐसा रूप दिया जा सकता है जिससे उसमें उनका रुझान पैदा हो अब मैं जम्मू कश्मीर में करीब-करीब दो साल से यहां पर वाइस चांसलर के रूप में काम कर रहा हूं हमने यहां एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्शन डिपार्टमेंट और सभी जो सहयोगी डिपार्टमेंट है उनके साथ में चल के एक मुहिम शुरू की स्पेशलिटी एग्रीकल्चर कि हमें हर चीज उगाने की जरूरत नहीं है हमें वो चीज उगानी चाहिए कि जो हमारी जो जलवायु है उसको जो सपोर्ट करती है जैसे मैं जम्मू कश्मीर का एग्जांपल दूं यहां पर ट्रॉपिकल सब ट्रॉपिकल टेंपरेट पोर्ट कोल्ड डेजर्ट ड्राई लैंड हर तरह की जो जलवायु उपलब्ध है तो मैं दो तीन उदाहरण यहां के देना चाहता हूं जिस पे हमने फोकस किया है और आज का उसका परिणाम है कि जो जम्मू कश्मीर की जो नेशनल लेवल पे फार्मर्स की इनकम है वो तीसरे स्थान पर है पंजाब और हरियाणा के बाद पर कैपिटा इनकम ऑफ द फार्मर्स इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज एट द थर्ड प्लेस ऑल ओवर द कंट्री हमने स्पेशलिटी एग्रीकल्चर को हाई वॉल्यूम हाई वैल्यू लो वॉल्यूम क्रॉप्स को हमने बढ़ावा दिया जैसे मैं सैफरन का उदाहरण दूं जो पेंपोर एरिया में हमारे श्रीनगर में किसवार में होता है मैंने फार्मर से इंटरेक्ट किया हमारा रिसर्च फार्म भी है उसमें पता लगा कि एक फार्मर की जो इनकम है 12 लाख हेक्टेयर तक हो सकती है सैफरन से तारा जीरा से भी 12 14 लाख रुपए की इनकम 1 हेक्टेयर से हो सकती है यदि इनकी हम मिक्स क्रॉपिंग करते हैं तो 21 लाख रुपए की इनकम हो सकती है और यहां की ऑन एन एवरेज जो इनकम थी वो करीब करीब 80000 से 1 लाख रुपए थी हम बात कर रहे हैं डबलिंग द इनकम ऑफ द फार्मर यहां कई ऐसे उदाहरण 
प्रस्तुत हुए हैं जिनकी इनकम दस गुना पंद्रह गुना भी किसानों की बढ़ी हुई है लेकिन वो प्रोडक्शन से नहीं वो डाइवर्सिफिकेशन एंड कॉमर्सलाइजेशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर जब हम बात करते हैं कि जमीन नहीं है पानी नहीं है तो कीमत बढ़ रही है क्लाइमेट सपोर्ट नहीं कर रही है यूथ उसमें जाना नहीं चाह रहा तो क्या हम एग्रीकल्चर को छोड़ सकते हैं एग्रीकल्चर को हम छोड़ नहीं सकते जैसे मैंने आपको बताया बाईस बीस से ज्यादा इसका जी में शेयर है हाफ ऑफ दी पॉपुलेशन इस पर जो रोजगार मिलता है 68 परसेंट की लोगों की ये जीविके का साधन है तो ये एक सेक्टर नहीं है ये पूरा हाफ ऑफ द इंडियन इकोनॉमी है हम इसको छोड़ नहीं सकते चाहे कितनी भी बाधाएं तो किस तरह की खेती की जाए अब हम बात करते हैं एग्रीकल्चर विच वॉज ए वे ऑफ लाइफ कन्वर्टिंग एग्रीकल्चर विच वॉज ए वे ऑफ लाइफ इन टू ए डायनेमिक एंटिटी दैट इज एग्री बिजनेस कॉमर्सलाइजेशन एंड डाइवर्सिफिकेशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इस पर पूरे देश में चर्चा हो रही है और यदि हम ये चीजें करते हैं तो हमारी इनकम दो गुना नहीं कई गुना बढ़ सकती है समय का बाध्यता है लेकिन मैंने देखा कि कुछ चीजें हैं जो जिनसे वो हमें करना चाहिए जैसे अभी भी बात हुई थी सीड प्रोडक्शन जैसे हम मैं जम्मू कश्मीर की बात करूं तो यहाँ सीड रिप्लेसमेंट रेस जो है बारह से छब्बीस परसेंट है जबकि सीड एक ऐसा फैक्टर है जिसका जो शेयर होता है प्रोडक्शन में ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट होता है तो सीड सस्टेनेबिलिटी कैसे की जाए हमने यहाँ फार्मर पार्टिसिपेटरी सीड प्रोडक्शन प्रोग्राम की शुरुआत की हॉर्टिकल्चर फ्लोरिकल्चर ऐसा है जैसे यहाँ की तो इकोनॉमी है जो मैं जम्मू कश्मीर की बात करूँ या लेकर की तो हॉर्टिकल्चर यहाँ की जो है बेसिक इकोनॉमी है यहाँ हमने हाई डेंसिटी ऑर्चर्ड का प्रचलन शुरू किया जबकि पहले आठ से दस टन पर प्रति हेक्टेयर एप्पल होता था अब चालीस से पचास टन होने लगा है इसी तरह से मेडिसिनल एरोमेटिक प्लांट यहाँ जैसे लेवेंडर पर्पल रिवोल्यूशन की शुरुआत हुई है मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी के माध्यम से यहाँ लेमन ग्रास हो सकता है लेवेंडर हो सकता है यहाँ पर बहुत सारी जो चीजें हैं बहुत स्पेशलिटी है यहाँ का जो भदरवा का राजमा से स्पेशल है यहाँ का जो बासमती राय से आर एस पुरा का वो स्पेशल है तो हमें उन चीजों को बढ़ावा देने की जरूरत है फिशरीज है फिशरीज पे यहाँ डिमांड तीन लाख टन की डिमांड है जम्मू कश्मीर पे लेकिन प्रोडक्शन होता था सिर्फ बीस हजार टन तो इसमें बहुत ज्यादा गुंजाइश है मशरूम बी कीपिंग यहाँ छोटी जोत है जैसे हमें मैंने आपको उदाहरण दिया कि नेशनल लेवल पे वन पॉइंट लेकिन यहाँ लैंड की अवेलेबिलिटी सिर्फ 0.56 हेक्टेयर है करीब करीब हाफ है नेशनल एवरेज की तो ऐसी स्थिति में हम जो है जो नॉर्मल क्रॉप है गेहूँ धान उसको हम बाहर से मंगा सकते हैं लेकिन यहाँ जैसे पानी बहुत है फिशरीज हो सकती है मेडिसिनल एरोमेटिक प्लांट हर तरह के हो सकते हैं फ्लोरिकल्चर हॉर्टिकल्चर तो कहने का मेरा मतलब है कि जिस क्षेत्र में जिस चीज की संभावना है उसको हमें करना है अब गवर्नमेंट ने प्राइम मिनिस्टर की एक स्कीम आई प्राइम मिनिस्टर स्कीम वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट तो हमने भी यहाँ पर जम्मू कश्मीर में ये आइडेंटिफाई किया कि किस डिस्ट्रिक्ट में किस चीज की संभावना है और हमें उसी पे फोकस करना है जैसे कठवा डिस्ट्रिक्ट है जो कि पंजाब से लगा हुआ है उसको हमने स्पाइस डिस्ट्रिक्ट के रूप में घोषित किया है वहाँ हमारा फोकस है हल्दी की खेती करना और स्पाइसिस की खेती करना इसी तरह से सांभा डिस्ट्रिक्ट है उसको मशरूम डिस्ट्रिक्ट के रूप में हमने घोषित किया है इसी तरह से जम्मू जहाँ मैं बैठा हूँ या रजौरी है या बड़गांव डिस्ट्रिक्ट है इनको हमने जो है घोषित किया है कि ये डेयरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट है तो यहाँ हमारे बाकी चीजें भी होंगी लेकिन हमारा जो फोकस होना चाहिए उन चीजों पर होना चाहिए जिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट में जिस चीज की संभावनाएं अधिक है दूसरा मेरा मानना है कि प्रोडक्शन छोटा फार्मर है वो लेवेंडर भी कर सकता है लेमन ग्रास भी कर सकता है ओलिव की खेती भी कर सकता है सेफ्रन भी कर सकता है लेकिन प्रोसेसिंग इन वैल्यू एडिशन उसके बस की बात नहीं है और मैं इस चीज को हाईलाइट यहाँ करना चाहता हूँ कि यदि हमें डबल करना है आमदनी ज्यादा बढ़ानी है तो प्रोडक्शन से पांच दस परसेंट बढ़ सकती है लेकिन जो आमदनी किसान की बढ़ेगी प्रोसेसिंग वैल्यू एडिशन एंड मार्केटिंग वो मैं इसलिए कह रहा हूँ कि जो हमारे पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट लॉसेज है वो वर्ल्ड में सबसे ज्यादा है बहुत ज्यादा है जैसे 15 से 20 परसेंट पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट लॉसेज हैं हमारे और हर साल जो हमारा प्रोडक्शन बढ़ता है तीन परसेंट और उस तीन परसेंट को बढ़ाने के लिए हमारा मोर देन 90 परसेंट जो रिसोर्सेज हैं उस तीन परसेंट को बढ़ाने के लिए होती हैं सिर्फ पाँच दस परसेंट हमारा पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट पे जाता है और लिहाजा हमारा पंद्रह से बीस जो प्रोडक्शन है वो वेस्ट हो जाता है ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने एक बार मैंशन किया था जीरो हंगर थ्रू जीरो वेस्टेज जो हमारा 300 मिलियन टन है यदि उसका जो 20 परसेंट लॉस हो रहा है तो 60 मिलियन टन तो हम वेस्ट कर रहे हैं जो कि कई कंट्रीज लाइक ऑस्ट्रेलिया के प्रोडक्शन से भी ज्यादा है तो हम यदि उस 20 परसेंट लॉसेज को 5 परसेंट भी हम लॉसेज कम कर देते हैं 10 परसेंट भी लॉसेज कम कर देते हैं तो हमें प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाने की भी बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी और वो लॉसेज
जो प्रोसेसिंग होती है फिलीपींस में 78 परसेंट होती है ब्राजील में 70 परसेंट होती है सिर्फ हमारे यहाँ दो परसेंट होती है लिहाजा लॉसेस जो है हमारे बहुत ज्यादा है अब एक जो कॉन्सेप्ट आया है बहुत बढ़िया कॉन्सेप्ट आया है जो गवर्नमेंट ने कहा कि फार्मर्स की इनकम को डबल करना है तो वो ऐसे ही नहीं कह दिया उसके लिए सपोर्टिंग मैकेनिज्म दिया है एक जो नया कॉन्सेप्ट आया है फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जैसे मैंने पहले भी कहा कि किसी किसान ने यदि सेफरन उगा भी ली काला जीरा उगा भी लिया उसकी प्रोसेसिंग कहाँ होगी लेमन ग्रास उगा भी लिया उसका इत्र कहाँ से निकलेगा वो उसके बस की नहीं था लेकिन ये जो फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का कॉन्सेप्ट आया है इसमें बहुत बड़ा सपोर्ट किसानों को दिया गया है यदि किसानों का संघ बनता है ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बनाते हैं वो अपना फार्मर्स प्रोड्यूसर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो उनको जो है 18 लाख रुपए की सहायता सरकार देगी और इसके लिए तीन जो एजेंसीज हैं वो चिन्हित की गई हैं एक एनसीटीसी है एक नाबार्ड है एक नेफेड है तो वो और जो संस्था बनाती है जैसे हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी बना रही है हमने नौ एफ पी ओस यहाँ बनाए जम्मू कश्मीर में तो उसके लिए 25 लाख रुपए की सहायता यूनिवर्सिटी को दी गई है प्रति एफ पी ओ और 18 लाख रुपए की जो है सहायता दी गई है जो किसान भाई बनाते हैं जैसे प्लेन से के एरियाज हैं वहाँ पे 300 किसानों का जुड़ना जरूरी है और जो पहाड़ी क्षेत्र हैं दूर दराज के क्षेत्र हैं वहाँ सौ लोग फार्मर्स आपस में जुड़ के जो है ये एफ पी ओ बना सकते हैं तो ये स्कीम जो है बहुत ही जो प्रोसेसिंग में बाधा थी वैल्यू एडिशन में बाधा थी अब किसान अपना जो है ब्रांडिंग कर सकते हैं मान लीजिए सौ किसान मिलकर हल्दी उगा रहे हैं तो उसकी प्रोसेसिंग मशीन भी लगा सकते हैं जो राशि उपलब्ध कराई जाएगी उसकी पैकेजिंग कर सकते हैं ब्रांडिंग कर सकते हैं और उसको मार्केट में इंडिया में नहीं उसको जो है वो एक्सपोर्ट भी कर सकते हैं तो एक ये बहुत बड़ी सुविधा जो है गवर्नमेंट ने प्रदान की है दूसरा आपने सुना होगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर आत्मनिर्भर भारत ये पहले कभी स्कीम इस तरह की आई नहीं जो इस तरह का एलोकेशन जिसमें किया गया हो जैसे मैंने कहा 15 से 20 परसेंट लॉसेज हो जाते हैं तो उसके लिए एक लाख करोड़ रुपए का प्रावधान किया गया है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट एट द फार्म गेट एक लाख करोड़ रुपए का और इसी तरह से माइक्रो एंटरप्राइज यदि फूड माइक्रो एंटरप्राइज डेवलप की करनी है तो उसके लिए दस करोड़ का प्रावधान रखा गया है प्रधानमंत्री किसान संपदा योजना इसके लिए 6000 करोड़ रुपए का है इसीलिए प्रधानमंत्री मत्स्य संपदा योजना फिशरीज के प्रोडक्शन को बढ़ाने के लिए 20,050 करोड़ का प्रावधान रखा गया है हर्बल कल्टीवेशन के लिए 4000 करोड़ का रखा गया है एनिमल हस्बेंड्री जो सेक्टर है इसके लिए 15,000 करोड़ रखा गया है और उसके अलावा 13,340 करोड़ रुपए रखे गए हैं वैक्सीनेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स इसी तरह से बी कीपिंग की जो मैं बात कर रहा था छोटे किसान है इवन जिसकी जमीन भी नहीं है वो भी मधुमक्खी पालन कर सकता है और ये एक ऐसी एंटरप्राइज है जो कि अपना इसका रिपेमेंट पीरियड जो सिर्फ एक साल है यानी चार हजार रुपये का एक बक्सा आता है तो वो अब एक बक्सा अपने एक साल के अंदर ही अपनी कॉस्ट को रिपे कर देता है और किसी किसान ने जो कि जमीन भी नहीं है इसको मैडो पर रखा जा सकता है रोड के साइड में रखा जा सकता है जब वहाँ फूल पत नहीं है दूसरी जगह उसको ट्रांसपोर्ट किया जा सकता है यानी कि पचास बक्से रखे हैं तो दो लाख रुपए वो भी ले सकता है जिस किसान के पास में जमीन नहीं है तो इस तरह के जो ये प्रावधान रखे गए हैं टॉप टू टोटल के लिए 500 करोड़ रुपए का प्रावधान रखा गया है तो इसको जो है हमें इसको सभी के संज्ञान में लाना चाहिए कि इन योजनाओं का किस तरह से जो हम फायदा उठा सकते हैं और एक बहुत बड़ी जो चीज आई है अभी नेशनल एजुकेशन जो पॉलिसी है 2020 न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 इसमें जो फोकस दिया गया है वोकेशनल एजुकेशन पे दिया गया है कि उसका पूरा आशा ये था कि किस तरह से जो जॉब सीकर्स हैं उनको जॉब क्रिएटर्स में कैसे कन्वर्ट किया जाए क्योंकि अभी हमारी शिक्षा प्रणाली इस तरह से है एडमिशन जब लेते हैं तो तभी संज्ञान में लेते हैं तभी ध्यान में रखते हैं कि हमें किस तरह का जॉब करना है ये हमारे संज्ञान में नहीं आता ये हमारी सोच में नहीं आता हमारा माइंडसेट ऐसा नहीं है कि हमें पढ़ाई लिखाई करके कोई रोजगार करना है स्वरोजगार करना है और ये बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि नाइन्टी जो जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं वो अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में है सिर्फ आठ परसेंट जो अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं जॉब की वो ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में है और इसको हम बढ़ा नहीं सकते बढ़ा क्या सकते हैं हम बढ़ा सकते हैं कि सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट के लिए लोगों को हम किस तरह से तैयार करें जिससे उनकी सोच में जॉब सीकर से हट के जॉब क्रिएटर के रूप में आए और इसी को देखते हुए हमने जो न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी है उसमें प्रावधान रखा गया है कि 2000 अभी तक जो हम अभी जो हमारे यहाँ वोकेशनल एजुकेशन का स्टेटस है सिर्फ पाँच परसेंट वोकेशनल एजुकेशन है हमारे एजुकेशन सिस्टम में जबकि हम साउथ कोरिया की बात करें वह नाइन्टी है हम जर्मनी
जर्मनी की बात करें 75 परसेंट है यूएसए की बात करें वह वोकेशनल एजुकेशन 62 परसेंट है लेकिन हमारे यहाँ सिर्फ पांच परसेंट है हम जॉब सीकर ही पैदा कर रहे हैं और अब न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी में जो टारगेट रखा गया है कि भाई 2025 50 परसेंट जो है हम वोकेशनल एजुकेशन को बढ़ावा देंगे और जो 2035 तक 80 परसेंट हमारा जो है एजुकेशन में वोकेशनल एजुकेशन होगा और जैसे अभी आई की गाइडलाइंस बन रही हैं उसमें ये प्रोविजन रखा गया है कि जो डिग्री है वो सिर्फ पढ़ाई नहीं है अभी जो फोर्थ ईयर में जैसे करते हैं उसमें फोर्थ ईयर में हेलो हाँ उसमें सिर्फ फोर्थ ईयर में हम थोड़ा सा वोकेशनल एजुकेशन की बात करते हैं प्रेजेंट सिस्टम में लेकिन अब रखा गया है कि फर्स्ट ईयर में सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स होगा वोकेशनल कोर्स होगा सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स होगा और उस सर्टिफिकेट के बाद में कोई छोड़ना चाहता है तो वो छोड़ सकता है जरूरी नहीं है चार साल डिग्री करे और सेकेंड ईयर जो होगा वो डिप्लोमा कोर्स होगा जिसमें एंटरप्राइज क्रिएशन के बारे में बात होगी एग्रो बेस्ट एंटरप्राइजेस की बात होगी और यदि फर्दर स्टूडेंट आगे करना चाहता है तो वो चार साल कंप्लीट करके डिग्री ले सकता है तो पहले ये ऑप्शन नहीं था फर्स्ट ईयर के बाद में आपने छोड़ दिया तो आप कहीं के नहीं है तो अब फर्स्ट ईयर में सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स होगा जिसमें 20, 25, 30 जो जिनकी अपॉर्चुनिटी है एंटरप्राइजेस उनके बारे में बताया जाएगा टेक्निकल फिजिबिलिटी क्या है इकोनॉमिक वाइबिलिटी क्या है सपोर्ट गवर्नमेंट का क्या है उसके बाद अपना काम शुरू कर सकते हैं तो मेरा कहना यह है कि इस ये जो आने वाले समय में जो हमारी न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी है एक बहुत बड़ा गेम चेंजर होने वाली है जिसमें सेल्फ रिलायंस जो इंडिया के हम बात करते हैं इस ये इसका एक बहुत बड़ा जो पार्ट होगा इसी तरह से बहुत सारी स्कीम जो हमने स्टार्टअप के लिए शुरू की हैं एक रफ्तार करके स्कीम है जो आर के वी वाई की है मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर की इसमें दो स्कीमें रखी गई हैं जो हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी में भी हमने इनक्यूबेशन सेंटर रखा है उसमें दो स्कीमें रखी गई हैं एक है उद्गम उद्गम का मतलब है कि कोई भी विद्यार्थी कोई भी यूथ कोई आइडिया लेके आता है और वो आइडिया लगता है कि इसमें एंटरप्रेन्योर अपॉर्चुनिटी है इस, इसको जो है एंटरप्राइज में कन्वर्ट किया जा सकता है तो उसको पाँच लाख रुपए का सपोर्ट दिया जाता है उद्गम को के लिए और उसको पोषित किया जाता है उसका प्रोजेक्ट में कन्वर्ट कराया जाता है हैंड होल्डिंग की जाती है और यदि कोई युवा कोई व्यक्ति कोई ग्रेजुएट ये वो ऑलरेडी कोई एंटरप्राइज चला रहे हैं उनका कोई उद्यम चल रहा है तो उसको दूसरी स्कीम है रफ्तार के अंदर प्रगति तो उस प्रगति के अंदर जो है 25 लाख रुपए का प्रावधान है ये स्कीम हमारे यहाँ भी चल रही है 20 स्टार्टअप हमने इस स्कीम के माध्यम से ऑलरेडी शुरू कर दिए हैं और हमारा टारगेट है कि आने वाले अगस्त तक हम जो है करीब करीब सेवेंटी स्टार्टअप इस यूनिवर्सिटी के माध्यम से शुरू करेंगे इसी तरह से उड़ान एक स्कीम है जो स्टार्टअप के लिए है और आई की एक स्कीम ऑलरेडी चल रही है स्टूडेंट रेडी इसमें जैसे रूरल एंटरप्रेन से अवेयरनेस डेवलपमेंट योजना इसमें हम स्टूडेंट को जो वोकेशनल कोर्सेज हैं चाहे मशरूम है चाहे बी कीपिंग है चाहे नर्सरी टीचिंग है इस तरह की ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम देते हैं जिस तरह जो जैसे कि वो जो है स्किल डेवलप करके और अपना ग्रेजुएशन करने के बाद अपनी कोई इंटरप्राइज शुरू कर सकें इसी तरह से नेशनल इनिशिएटिव फॉर डेवलपमेंट एंड हार्डनेसिंग इनोवेशन निधि एक तरह की योजना है तो इस तरह से बहुत अटल इनोवेशन मिशन है एग्री क्लिनिक्स जो मैनेज और नाबार्ड के एस एफ के माध्यम से चलती है नाबार्ड इसमें फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंट देता है इसमें 20-25 ऐसे उद्गम हैं ऐसे इनोवेशन हैं ऐसे एंटरप्राइजेज हैं जिनके बारे में ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है और उनको जो फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट ट्रेनिंग देने के बाद में दिया जा सकता है तो ये कि इस तरह से जो है एंटरप्रेनल कल्चर हमारे देश में डेवलप हो रहा है और मेरा मानना है कि कोई भी देश तब तक प्रगति नहीं कर सकता जब तक उनके लोगों में एंटरप्रेनर कल्चर न हो और एक और बात मैंने कही थी कि मार्केटिंग प्रोडक्शन ही नहीं प्रोसेसिंग वैल्यू एडिशन और मार्केटिंग स्किल हमारे किसानों में स्पेशली युवाओं में डेवलप करना बहुत जरूरी है हमने एक स्टडी जब मैं आई में था तो हमने एक स्टडी की थी और उसमें पाया था शेयर और फार शेयर और फार्मर एंड कंज्यूमर रुपीज ओनली ट्वेंटी थ्री परसेंट यानी कि जो मैं एज ए कंज्यूमर किसी प्रोडक्ट का एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट का फूड का देता हूँ सौ रुपए थे उसमें से सिर्फ तेईस रुपए ही उसको प्रोड्यूसर को जाता है ये इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है हाउ टू इंक्रीज दोडक्शन बट दी इम्पोर्टेंट इट हाउ टू इंक्रीज द शेयर ऑफ फार्मर एंड कंज्यूमर रुपये इसके लिए हमें उनकी कैपेसिटी कॉम्पिटेंसी इन कैपेबिलिटीज को फार्मर्स की को युवाओं की को बढ़ाना होगा कि जो अपने जो प्रोड्यूस है उसका उनको रेमोनेटिव 
प्राइस कैसे मिले और आज अच्छी चीज है कि इसमें बहुत सारे युवा आई से आई से पढ़ के भी एग्रीकल्चर के क्षेत्र में आ रहे हैं और मेरा मानना है कि बाकी चीजों की कमी हो सकती है कोरोना पीरियड में हमने देख लिया कि किसी को कार की चिंता नहीं थी किसी को मोबाइल की चिंता नहीं थी आईफोन की चिंता नहीं थी लेकिन चिंता एक चीज की थी कि उन्हें दो वक्त का खाना मिल जाए और इस प्लेटफॉर्म से इस देश के किसानों का पॉलिसी मेकर्स का जो गवर्नमेंट का सपोर्ट रहा और वैज्ञानिकों का किसी भी व्यक्ति को खाने की वजह से हमने नहीं मरने दिया ये एक बहुत ही अच्छी बात हमारे किसानों के लिए और हमारी संस्थाओं के लिए और पॉलिसी सपोर्ट के लिए है और कभी भी आने वाले समय में ये जो एग्रीकल्चर है ऐसा क्षेत्र है कि इसकी डिमांड कभी नहीं होगी और मेरा मानना है कि आत्मनिर्भर भारत की हम बात करते हैं तो आत्मनिर्भर भारत का रास्ता हमारे एग्रीकल्चर से जाएगा और यहाँ पर माननीय कमल तौरी जी भी हैं उन्होंने एक टर्म दिया था ग्लोबल विजन वाला उन्होंने कहा था ग्लोबल विजन इन लोकल एक्शन और अभी हमारे ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब ने कहा है वोकल फॉर लोकल तो हमें अपनी चीजों को देश के लिए और हम विदेश के लिए भी पूरी वर्ल्ड के लिए एक उदाहरण बन सकते हैं बसरते जो एग्रीकल्चर विच वॉज ए वे ऑफ लाइफ नीड टू बी कन्वर्टेड इन एग्री बिजनेस दैट इज दाइनेमिक एंटिटी विद दीज वर्ड्स आई थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू इन डीड प्रोफेसर जे पी शर्मा जी uh, मेरा ख्याल है इतना कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव प्रजेंटेशन uh, आपने दिया है जो कि प्रोड्यूस से लेकर के मार्केटिंग एंड टचेज द लाइफ ऑफ एवरी बडी इन दार्मिंग सोसाइटी एग्रप्रन्योरशिप ग्रोथ ऑफ द कंट्री यंग जनरेशन एवरीबडी हैज बीन कवर्ड so and how to in fact not only double but actually make it you know 5 to 10 times that's a great news that you know you just manage your uh, uh, product mix of the production of the farming by the diversification in fact you can, you have the potential to increase much more than two times in spite of the fact that india has got a uh, much lower water Uh, per person and uh, much lower land per person instead of that we are in surplus uh, and we need to in fact improve uh, the uh, the processing marketing preservation technology and all those things you know need to be added and reinforced in our activities and that is why today we are here we are extremely grateful to you sir you have given very very uh useful in fact inputs and the policies which you have mentioned all those you know those interested will definitely be interacting and uh, it will be clear in further questions and answers so uh, with this now we come to the second presentation we have with us uh, sanjay vidyarthi ji uh, sanjay vidyarthi ji in fact you know he, he is a technocrat uh ye mute kisi se aa rahi awaaz ha so uh, sanjay vidyarthi ji has been in fact uh, in multiple countries mainly in us working with the uh, uh, fortune 500 companies almost for uh, 34 years after that he decided to come back to india and uh, got into the uh, uh, agripreneurship and he is doing wonderful uh, in fact uh, job here and uh, before uh, you know like uh, Uh, i would not like to take much time i will invite uh, sanjay ji to present his uh, case uh, <clears throat> good evening uh, dubey ji and all the esteemed uh, listeners uh, let me just first share my presentation and then we go from there Uh, are you able to see yes yes, yes. okay uh, i will just take off from where uh, vice chancellor saab really left um, as uh, mr dubey said you know i have had a very lot i mean a number of years of uh, corporate engagement and last 3 years uh, my wife and i have been working in villages i quit corporate world at the age of 53 and after that uh, we are working with farmers Uh, specifically helping them organize farmer producer organizations and uh, helping them adopt technology so those two are really activities which we do with farmers 
Uh, two years ago, when the COVID was uh, hit us, first uh, wave, uh, eight of us formed a company, Agritech Enablers, which is essentially, I'm going to talk about that as well as we move along, uh, to help, uh, specifically to help small and marginal farmers adopt technology and increase income 10x plus. Uh, and the last two years journey is what, you know, three years basically what I have learned uh, about agriculture. Uh, so first and foremost, the topic of, for my talk to you uh, today is mega opportunities, not small opportunities, but mega opportunities in Indian agriculture and farmer upliftment. Those are the two uh, major, major topics which we are going to talk about in this presentation. So first and foremost, I mean, let me, uh, the, the, the way I have structured this presentation, I'm going to talk about Indian agriculture scenario just taking off from where uh, the vice chancellor left. Uh, I'll update, appraise you on what kind of opportunities exist in Indian agriculture, opportunities in the problems of Indian agriculture, there's a third element, uh, ultimate success model. There is, uh, we have Kaushalindra Yadav, who is CEO of Farm Veda, is with us. Uh, he's also ex-IIT Kanpur. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about it and then, you know, uh, and leave uh, it to Koshla and there's really talk about CCD Farm with the Center of Collective Development and Farm with the model. And finally, I'm going to bring you uh, what we are doing in AgriTech Enabler is essentially for building a business model for upliftment of small and marginal farmers. Uh, so first and foremost, um, uh, Vice Chancellor talked about, uh, you know, largely, well, I'm going to just focus on the largest contingent of farmers, which is about 88% farmers. Th this data is again, NSSA data and NABARD's financial inclusion survey, two, two data points which I've used here. About 88% farmers in India are uh, small and marginal farmers. The average land holding of uh, small and marginal farmers is about one and a half acres. Uh, the big number which should really be in our head essentially and that's what really you know galvanizes me every day when i go to work uh, these 125 small and marginal farmer million small and marginal farmer they support five family members again this is government data which essentially is about 600 million people 600 million people uh, unless this 600 million people who is subsisting who's living at agri income of 2,500 per month, supporting five family members, unless this segment really uplifts, India is perennially going to be an underdeveloped country. Let's, you know, this number is a scary number and we should all be really cognizant of it. So you can build as many unicorns as possible. I, I part of unicorn, you know, as many unicorns as much make in India essentially, but, this country will only progress if this 600 million people really up, are up, uplifted. No, no, that's the bottom line. And that's why really, you know, it's, we started thinking as to what to really do as for how to really build a model to really help these farmers. Uh, the structural problems in, in Indian agriculture, very small farm size, very low productivity, uh, and therefore, because of low productivity, very low income. You know, as per Nabard's financial inclusion survey, all farmers, including you know large farmers, 100% uh, farmers, agri income is 3,140 rupees a month. That's including the 12% large farmers. If we exclude the 12% large farmers, the agri income per month of uh, rest of the 85% farmers is 2,500 rupees a month. So prime reason, the productivity is very low. Why the productivity is very low? Because, uh, you know, because the technology adoption is very, very low. Why technology adoption is very low? Because the farmers cannot access credit. So they don't, they have very low income, therefore they don't have ability to raise credit, therefore they can't adopt technology, therefore their productivity is low. This is, these are the significant, significant fundamental issues. The other structural problem is 70%, again, all of this data is Navard's financial inclusion survey. 70% of India's farmer takes loan from non-institutional lenders. So we can abuse the middlemen, uh, uh, the lal, we can call them whatever names we call them. 70% farmers cannot take loan. Put it this way, they cannot take loans from the bank. 
or rather put it this way, banks are not giving loan to 70% farmers. And those 70% farmers are being serviced by middlemen. So these are big, big structural issues. Ability to access credit, very low technology adoption, therefore very low productivity, inability to really get credit from uh, uh, institutional lenders. So these are very big challenges. This is the technology adoption in India. This again, data is coming out of Nabard's financial. This is government data, Nabard's financial inclusion survey. Only 5.2% farmers in India have tractors. 1.8% power tillers, sprinklers 0.8%, rape irrigation 1.6%, harvester 0.2%. With that, obviously, you know, you can imagine, you know, this, the, with, with this technology adoption, we are, as uh, the vice chancellor appraised you, we are either number one or number two uh, uh, pro commodity producing country in the world. Because we have 160 million hectares of land, which is the second largest arable land, right? So that's what is happening, right? So that's the dynamics. I wanted everybody to really understand what is happening. Now let's talk about the mega global opportunity. Now we under, see, I'm a business person. I, you know, you know, I really want to address any problem which is thrown at me as a business problem. So the business problem right now, as far as the world is concerned, that by 2050, when two additional billion people show up, the world will not have sufficient food with the existing technologies. That's a given. Ashki technology, Joby have drip irrigation, waki, whatever technologies we have, they cannot produce in our fertilizers the, or any, any kind of technology which we are using. They cannot produce adequate food for the remaining 2 billion people which are coming. Not just 2 billion people who are going to show up, but because the prosperity of people is going up, people start eating more food, better food essentially. Therefore, not enough food in, uh, in, in, uh, in just about 30 years, not very far off from now. All the technology companies, Every major, you can pick any company you, of, of it worth its salt, technology company worth its salt, is pouring billions of dollars in technology for agri-tech essentially. Whether it is Microsoft, whether it is Apple, whether it is Amazon, whether it is Dell, whether it is IBM, you can pick HP, you can pick any technologies, These uh, Google, why did I forget Google? Uh, huge, huge agri-division and huge, huge money they are pouring in agri-tech companies. Uh, look at the kind of cutting edge technology some of these guys are de developing. So there is this new technology, quantum computing, which is going to see now, uh, we, uh, somebody mentioned uh, just about uh, now that, you know, this, the, the earlier, every two years, the pace of development as far as transistors was concerned, capacity of transistors was doubling. Moore's law, basically. Every, Two years computing power would double. That has really plateaued. So with the current technologies, the computing power has completely plateaued. So the next computing technology with the world is pouring hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars is quantum computing. It's a trillion dollar computing uh, technology and huge amount of investment is going. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella says Microsoft is going to focus on three technologies for future. AR, VR, uh, artificial intelligence, and quantum computing. The first project which Microsoft has used for quantum computing is to design new type of fertilizer. Why? Fertilizers were invented in 1900s, early 1900s, by two people, Bosch, Bosch and Faber. It's a very, very complex process, very inefficient process. It uses a ton of uh, water and uh, you know, releases a ton of carbon dioxide in the manufacturing process. That process is so complicated that it has not been really changed or, you know, nobody has been able to design it for the last or redesign it in the last, you know, 100 years. Imagine a trillion dollar com in a technology, first project which Microsoft is using for a, as a proof of concept of quantum computing is redesigned fertilizer. So understand what is happening globally as far as focus on agri-tech is concerned. Big data analytics and crop planning, it's being used extensively. IoT, ML, precision farming, smart farming. These are technologies which are now, actually they're no more on table. I know it is hilarious that every state in India is doing proof of concept when these technologies are being used extensively in other parts of the world like Israel, 
like Netherlands, etc. You know, uh, artificial intelligence in yield production. You know, various elements, yield production, weather prediction, and the biggest use case of 5G is in agriculture. Imagine, you know, uh, you know, 160 million hectares of farm uh, being managed through IoT. It, it can only happen with 5G. So cutting edge technologies are being really developed for agri-tech. So, you know, huge mega, and why? Because there is a huge potential in agriculture. The third, now come to the, uh, you know, mega Indian opportunity. I keep hearing in every forum, you know, I, I see, oh, we are food surplus, food surplus. And I'm not going to mince words, you know, this is, uh, this is not a politically correct uh, forum and I don't want to be politically correct. Let's be clear in our heads, we are feeding only that much for people to survive essentially as far as 50% of India is concerned. You know, that is the reality. You come to my villages, I'll show you what the reality is. And my villages is not in, you know, Bastar or, you know, in Bihar or Jharkhand or Chhattisgarh. They are about 100 kilometers from Delhi. 50% women are anemic. 35 to 40% kids are wasted and stunted. That's the reality. No food surplus or no food surplus. <clears throat> Only 5% farmers in India grow fruits and vegetables. 10% Indians consume fruits and vegetables regularly. Now look at the kind of opportunity we have. If you remember <clears throat> 20, 30 years ago, this whole operation flood happened. You know, everybody should drink milk. Then came operation like, you know, the NBC, NBC uh, NECC came out with operation egg. Everybody should start eating it. Why not operation fruits and vegetables? Look at the health of our, you know, this is, you know, uh, we are, I mean, people keep debating about global hunger index. We are on 135 or 101 or 102. But point is we are not a healthy country. Why we are not a healthy country? Very simply because we are not eating enough fruits and vegetables, as simple as that. And that's a huge, huge opportunity. That's the mega opportunity we are talking about. There is no opportunity in dan and wheat and lentils right now. As, as uh, Chancellor Saab said very nicely, this can be imported from wherever we want. In fact, Adani ji imported lentils from Africa and India just about three, four years ago. You know, So th these things are not really, you know, they, are, they can be grown anywhere. They can, everybody can grow, so you can really import. Fruits and vegetables, on the other hand, it has an absolutely amazing value chain, and we'll come to that in a second. But two significant opportunities as far as Indian farmers are concerned. One, a global opportunity of really, you know, additional uh, two, uh, two billion people. And of course, our local opportunity as far as uh, fruits and vegetables, 90% of population doesn't have fruits and vegetables. Now, how do we really get to this opportunity? Now, the amazing thing is, when I, if I do a business, first thing I figure out, okay, uh, what is the opportunity? Second thing is, what is my capabilities? What's my core competence? Let me show you what our core competence is. This is where the significant opportunity comes in. If you compare any, any commodity, we are number one, number two, in, uh, as far as total production is concerned. But our average yield per hectare is among the worst in the world. In every commodity, there is not a single commodity where we are among the best in the world. Right? So wheat, we do 2.8 ton per hectare. Global best in class is about 9 ton per hectare. Uh, uh, rice, we do about 4 tons per hectare. Global best in class is 12 ton. Sugar cane, 66 in India, double of that, almost double of that in Peru. You know, every commodity you pick up, vegetables. I mean, look at vegetables essentially. California does, or US does, 75 tons. We're doing 15 tons per, per hectare. Now look at the growth opportunity. So at one point we are seeing the opportunity that dunya mein khana nahi hoega. Do saal mein, the everybody and you know major technology company is actually investing and in putting in technology. Here with the existing technology, forget about future technology. With the existing technology, we can just improve our productivity to global level and feed the entire world and become the feeding bowl of the world. You know that to me is a mega opportunity. With just the exit, forget about you know quantum computing and forget about AI. Take the existing technologies which are there. Just allow my farmers to really use the existing technologies, enable them to use the existing technologies, and look at what it can do. You know, 
and that is what really i see you know the huge opportunity there is no dearth of opportunity vaishnavas uh, vaichatlas have talk, talked about really water consumption you know how the water uh, per capita water uh, you know has come down dramatically uh, globally 70% of fresh water is used in agriculture this is again uh, data coming out of fao uh, food and agriculture organization in india that number goes up to 90% you imagine 90% of fresh water in india is used in agriculture so and look at what we are doing you know this is how our brain works we are mandating all these complexes in delhi and all the major cities yaar aapko water harvesting karni hai you should not waste water you know oh hum we spend crores and you know hundreds of crores of advertising pani band kar do aap boond boond pani bachao aap 10% pani bacha rahe ho 10% mein kya bachane wale ho aap 20% bachaoge 2% pani bacha rahe ho why don't you have my farmers really use drip irrigation across the board what subsidy we are talking about give sub 100% mandate some you know you can't mandate drip irrigation to the farmers aap drip nahi lagaoge aapko subsidy milna band ho gayi 50% drip irrigation cuts down water consumption by 50% 50% of the bat it not just cuts down on the water 50 it helps improve 50 to 60% productivity it helps cuts down on the fertilizer consumption by 50 to 60% yield quality is absolutely amazing when you use drip irrigation and it's it's really enables soil rejuvenation in a massive massive way to me as a business person no brainer so we do all the you know big stuff ye kar denge wo kar denge dharatal ki baat nahi kar rahe hum we provide technology take it to the global level why can't i really have my farmer use technology to get 70 tons out of my you know of my land essentially per hectare the way it is done in california and god has given us such a great country we are such a great country every climate in the world every climate in the world is present in india the california climate is present here the the netherlands climate is present here the canadian climate is present here the indonesian climate is present here every type of climate is present in india why can't we figure out what crop we should grow in which part of the area provide technology instead of 15 tons per hectare grow 75 tons per hectare of vegetables you know imagine uh, you know uh, we are talking of uh, tomatoes which is like 300 tons in belgium you know these are you know these numbers are mind boggling numbers and we really need to sensitize ourselves that look, this is what technology is doing you know this is this is mega indian growth opportunity as far as you know i'm concerned what are the significant problems and if there are problems then there are opportunities you know this is a group of iitians it's not just about agriculture look at what massive massive opportunity agriculture is throwing access to credit 70% indian farmers don't have access to credit that's 70% indian farmers we are talking of close to about 100 million 100 million farmers 100 million farmers 100 million customers ke liye us mein bank na apna pura zindagi laga denge i mean that's what is happens is and what kind of amazing opportunity that there is for microfinance for credit rating for finance it's an amazing opportunity track adoption a tech adoption i really talk i'm a talked about tech adoption pretty low tech adoption you know how do we really critical you know proliferate critical and critical technology which is affordable and scalable let me share with you uh, there are about 450 agri tech startups that's the number which came in from nascom if i believe deputy management director of nabard it's it's about 800 agri tech startup we are into agri tech enabling business so we evaluate large number of agri tech companies to see what technology i can really go and uh, help uh, the small and marginal farmers with i'm a technologist i worked in bell lab so i understand technology can you believe this that not one not one single agri tech company has thought through how they will be able to go and sell the, their solutions to small and marginal farmers not one you ask them kisko bechne wale ho itc ko bechenge hum this is i'm talking of all the, you talk of you know i'm i'll just take names and this is again not a politically correct uh, forum i don't have to be political then talk of cropin 
उनसे पूछे स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर्स के लिए कैसे आप सब आप दे डोंट हैव एन आंसर सो यू आर डेवलपिंग अ सॉल्यूशन फॉर हु फॉर अ हैंडफुल ऑफ फार्मर्स फॉर आईटीसी एंड फॉर दीस टेकिंग सो मच इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम ऑल द इन्वेस्टर्स समबडी नीड्स टू गो देयर एंड से भाई 70% मेरा 80% फार्मर्स को कौन देने वाला टेक्नोलॉजी हु इज गोइंग टू गिव टेक्नोलॉजी टू देम and if you haven't thought it if you haven't designed a product which can really go there or if you haven't thought through the business model that's a huge issue that's a huge issue and you iit and should help really sort that out essentially that's what i would you know request you skilling and farm practices again nabard's data these are horrifying data points uh, you know gentlemen 92% of farmers have not received any skilling this is nabard's data 92% despite 67 universities despite 2000 kv case 92% farmers have not uh, you know received any training i travel extensively i make it a point to go to the villages wherever i am and trust me it's the same story everywhere right from kashmir to kanyakumari the farmers and there is no connect between kvk there is no soil testing happening and this is nabard is testifying to this data 92% farmer so look at the kind of opportunity there is to really train 92% farmers across india let me make the so you understand the problem statement here this i will not name a very very high official in government of india of agriculture department i posed this question sir how do you intend to train he is is running a big center and i, I just would don't want to name him it doesn't look nice his answer to me was was hum to ji kuye hain वो प्यासे को कुएं के पास आना चाहिए लुक एट यू नो दिस इज द बैंक ऑफ थॉट इसेंशली साढ़े चौदह करोड़ फार्मर हिंदुस्तान के नुक एंड कॉर्नर में बैठा हुआ है आप बोलते हो सर हम तो कुएं हैं प्यासे को कुएं के पास आना चाहिए यू नो समेर देर इज रॉन्ग समथिंग रॉन्ग विद अस बिजनेस लीडर्स एवरीथिंग एवरीबडी यू नो वो इज नॉट एबल टू सी द प्रॉब्लम इसेंशली वॉट इज द टेक्निकल सोल्यूशन वी कैन रिली प्रिंग इन टू रियली ट्रेन ऑल दीज फार्मर्स who are really using archaic processes for archaic practices for farming simple stuff but you know it really needs a, and it is a huge opportunity it's a significant opportunity to think about you know training 145 million farmers in every nook and corner of india business management vice chancellor vice chancellor sahab said exactly right 1999 99% farmers are poor business managers unko ye pata nahi hota what is the cost How much have they spent? You know, if you ask a farmer, "Chalo, mujhe dikhao apne is is season mein kitna karcha kiya," they don't keep a record. So they actually don't know whether they are really making money or they're losing money. Lastly, national and regional crop planning. If you visit US, uh, Idaho grows potatoes, California grows uh, grows vegetables and nuts. Montana grows wheat. Why? Because government said, "Yeah, this area me, you are going to do this. If you really want government support, that's what you are going to do. If you don't want government support, you can do what you want. But government support, government pricing support, that's what you are going to do is in this area. In India, uh, VC sir just said, you know, uh, Punjab me farmer who tube bill be tube bill lagaya ja raha hai, dhan uh, ugaata hai. In a water stressed area, what is the point in really, uh, you know, growing rice? then a politician took sugar cane to maharashtra which is you know for ages they never you know a time memorial they have not grown sugar cane now they grow sugar cane in a water stressed area the, the reason why this is happening is there is no regional or national level crop planning happening we are not saying this is the area like for example uh, what uh, i was in pampur just about a couple of months ago and i visited uh, saffron fields essentially in pampur it's that particular area is so suited for uh, uh, for uh, saffron and no other area i mean if, even if you transplanted those plants you know in another area it won't grow it's such a beautiful example of absolutely amazing environment soil condition and with the climate condition which enables you know saffron in that particular area there are only three places in the world uh, where which grow saffron and pampur is one of them now if we extrapolate it and say well in the entire country what's the best place from a soil condition climate condition and environment that we should really grow what crop that is what we should really know and it's a bigger project than aadhar if you were started really doing it so these are problems in indian agriculture but at the same time they present 
humongous opportunities as far as Indian agriculture is concerned. What I have come to learn, uh, and the Vice Chancellor Saab also you know, pointed to that, the ultimate success model is what Center of Collective Development and Farm Veda is doing. Uh, both are IITNs. Dr. Tarlechan Shastri is not there with us today in this forum, but Kaushalendra is here, and I'll request uh, Mr. Dubey to really give uh, an opportunity to Kaushalendra to talk about it. It's an incredibly, incredibly successful model based on incredibly successful Amul model. Uh, what Amul did in dairy farming, uh, CCD and Farm Veda are doing in agriculture. They are organizing farmers in collectives. They have organized 40,000 farmers, 40,000 farmers in three states, in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and Maharashtra. They enable training, they enable credit, they handle the farmers, and then they're moving farmers to food processing. Uh, for you know, a 10 to 100x income enhancement through farmer-owned processing company. That is known as Farm Veda. Farm Veda is a Chris Gopalakrishna Infosys founder uh, uh, funded company, but being right now turned over or is going to be turned over to farmers as far as uh, ownership is concerned. They establish market linkages and they are doing brand development. 100% oh, profit of this uh, processing company, Farm Veda, goes back to the farmer. This is like, this is exactly what Amul Modern and Dr. Kurian did, what uh, Dr. Shastri is doing in agriculture. So this is really ultimate success model as far as agriculture is concerned, which was, which is what uh, Vaish Shastri was talking about FPOs, and then he was talking about processing. This is the model which is actually being executed on the ground today with 40,000 farmers. So I'll let, uh, you know, Kaushalinder talk about it. Now, what we are doing as far as agri-tech enablers, so when COVID started and there was this lot of anxiety about this whole labor migration which was happening. So since I was working for three years uh, in, in the villages, last couple of years in the villages, people said, okay, what is the issue? I said, you know, most of these guys are small and marginal farmers. They can't even subsist on the farming. So they come to uh, you know cities and do all kinds of menial jobs to survive essentially. And these are the guys who are now returning home, essentially. You know, so they said, okay, what is that is needed? So, you know, basically the problem is they don't have technology, the productivity is like, no. So we decided eight of us, we are ex-CEOs of Indian companies, multinationals, top bureaucrats of Indian government, and some entrepreneurs, we got together, formed this company, AgriTech Enablers. It's a section 12 company. Our goal is to enable the farmers to become agri preneurs by utilizing technology. You know, we'll, and by you know, enabling them to really uh, increase the productivity 10x and therefore income 10x essentially. So we are addressing, trying to address all the critical problems which the farmer has. We arrange funds for technology adoption. We enable technology selection. We do technology and operational skilling and handholding not for two months, three months, for three or four years till the farmer is really competent enough to really handle the technology on his own, establish market linkages, enable that produce to really go and sell and do the training of the farmer in business management. This whole model is based on build, operate, sustain and transfer. And it's a revenue share model with zero investment coming from farmer. It's all our funding. We bring in investors through a SPV where we share the revenue with the farmer Farmer gets a predetermined income as far as whatever his current income is concerned. The technology, whatever we are deploying, whatever results that technology gives, that revenue shared between farmer. Three to four years time, when, once the investors get their return back, we exit and everything, all the capital investment or capital uh, or uh, infrastructure which we created is handed back to the farmer and farmer runs. And when once we are sure, a farmer can run the business, he owns it. What we are doing right now is really building a comprehensive proof of concept, uh, which is here in Bonesi. What we are doing in this proof of concept is a three acre farm, one acre of a poly house or greenhouse, and two acres of open farm. Because we really wanted to understand the entire dynamics of what is needed, how a farm is operated, build uh, the you know competence, build the process, document the process, establish quality parameters, establish you know, the entire processes essentially, what is ne needed as far as uh, one acre and two acre uh, open farm for scaling. We have deployed technologies like polyhouse, precision fertigation, 
drip irrigation, mulching, and trellising in the open farm. In market linkages, we establish uh, B2C market linkages. We have established B2B neighborhood stores and chains online through Amazon. We tied up with Amazon. And Mundi, we brought in a very large Mundi wholesaler as an investor into the company. So this is the proof of concept. In fact, Mr. Dubey has visited uh, the farm and he's seen what we are doing there. Now, uh, before I really get into what we have done so far, let me get you to the financials. You know, these are typical financials because without financials, there's no discussion essentially whether this is a good field, bad field essentially. So typically, if you look at a poly house, uh, one acre of poly house, typical investment is about 32 lakhs essentially. 32 to 33 lakhs in terms of the infrastructure, which would include, include uh, the steel infrastructure, the poly sheets, the drip irrigation, fogger system, et cetera. So completely, complete project is about 32, 33 lakhs. Of that, the government, depending on which state you are, above 50 to 60% subsidy is given uh, by the government. And uh, the, the farmer has to really put in about 10 to 11 lakhs. If you talk of open farm, the kind of technologies in open farm is drip and mulch. Mostly that's what it is. So two acres of open farm, about two and a half lakh rupees of investment. Uh, the contribution by the farmer is about one and a half to 1.75 lakh, depending on, depending on what type of vendor is going. Because you get uh, vendors who will sell and run off, and then you'll get vendors who are really international vendors, quite capable vendors to really provide support like NetFM, et cetera. And then you have for precision fertigation where the government doesn't uh, give any subsidy. So that's about 60,000 rupees of precision fertigation system. On a uh, operating expense, manpower, we have a you know full-time manpower. We, we don't uh, do ad hoc manpower. So we need three full-time person for an acre of a poly house and two uh, people per acre as far as open farm is concerned. So altogether seven farm hands and one supervisor so roughly our operating expense for manpower expenses about 1.2 lakhs per month, roughly about 15 lakhs per annum. Then fertilizer, seeds, packing, and logistics cost is about 8 lakhs, 5 lakhs for poly house, and 1.5 lakhs per acre for open farm. Miscellaneous expenses of agronomic fee, electricity, water, maintenance of poly house, et cetera, about 2 lakh rupees. Depending on what crop uh, mix you have and the soil condition you have, anywhere between 25 to 35 lakhs is the revenue from vegetables, not from flowers. Flowers is a different game altogether. Vegetables and what we grow in polyols, the kind of vegetables we are growing is cucumber, uh, capsicum, red, red and yellow bell peppers, cherry tomatoes, tomatoes. These are the major crops which are grown inside a polyols. 25 to 35 lakhs. If you talk of a good farmer who's been in the business for six, seven, eight years, he easily does about 35 to 40 lakh rupees of uh, revenue out of a poly house. Open farm, again, again uh, not, uh, not tomato, onion, and potato. Uh, other crops than tomato, onion, and potato gets you about 10 to 15 lakhs. So about five to seven and a half lakhs per acre is, is the revenue, not income, revenue. Now, uh, the, the EBITDA, if we let, reduce uh, 25 lakhs of expenses from the revenue, your EBITDA is roughly in the range of about 10 lakhs to 25 lakhs. Depreciation on the capital asset, because we are a company, depreciation on capital assets is about 2 lakh rupees if, on a seven-year basis. Net income is 8 to 25 lakhs, depending on crop mix and your soil condition. That's 22% to 50%. Now, this is what we need to really go and explain to the young guy sitting in the village. That he can do what he wants to do. I run a, I run a company with 3,000 people, essentially, in 130 cities in India and 23 states. And I 80% of my employees were coming out of villages. 10th grader, 12th grader, diploma holders. ITIs and diploma holders, 80%. Average salary, including my salary of the entire 3,000 population, used to be about 18,000 rupees per annum, per month, sorry, 18,000 rupees per month. This is what we need to really go and tell everybody who's interested in agriculture. If you did professional agriculture, this is what you're going to be really getting. Anywhere between 20% to 50% return. And I'm yet not talked about flowers. I just sat with uh, a gentleman who's going to help us really put projects with flowers, with gerbera and lilies. Lilies can be easily a crore rupees from an acre of farm. So these are high risk, high value, and high reward games. You know, but 
on a regular basis with regular crops like cucumber if you just do cucumber in a poly house cucumber alone will give you 20 22 lakh rupees worth of income in a year you know it is it is very very simple mathematics you know and this is coming out of this is not paper exercise this is not scientists sitting in a lab doing it this is my our own experience this is experience coming out of farmers who are actually doing it and making a living out of it so these are amazing business model but huge risk and challenges nothing you know nothing comes without risk and challenges you know if anybody would thought you know anything comes without risk and challenges nothing first of all everything in agriculture is broken expertise availability is completely broken and you know we just to, you know we have some top bureaucrats with us we have some you know some uh, ceos of some top indian companies with us you know we struggle to find people who can come and uh, give us real good consultancy essentially and i'll not name the organizations we norm every organization every major organization in people would come and give us you know sala which was diametrically opposite to really what the farmer is actually doing essentially aap mulch mat lagao chalega kaam you know mulch nahi lagao you know i should really have two more people to really go and do weeding this is the expertise coming out of the top institutes essentially so it's a huge issue as well as expertise availability is concerned second was skilled manpower availability with whatever universities you know we went to one of the top universities again no point in naming that university to hire people we hired one and we said top top guy of that university top student of that university hired him we said okay now basically what we want to do is document all the processes of poly house farming is a sir hamare yahan ek poly house hai hum ek hi baar gaye the us poly house mein you know this is high tech high tech stuff which is you know world is doing it uh, top university saying hum ek hi baar gaye the poly house mein मैं कोई बात नहीं आप अपने प्रोफेसर से जाके पूछो कैसा स्टेप वन टू स्टेप हंड्रेड बता दें कैसे पॉली हाउस फार्मिंग करते हैं यू नो व्हाट वाज़ द रिस्पांस ऑफ द प्रोफेसर टॉप यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इंडिया गूगल पे रिसर्च कर लो आपको पता चल जाएगा पॉली हाउस फार्मिंग कैसे करते हैं नॉट अ स्मॉल चेंज गाइज नो वी वी रियली है get industry people we can get resources we can you know you know pay for resources we can call people to really get and this is what we were hearing essentially finding skilled manpower to do high tech uh, high tech uh, agriculture is is real problem we went to agriculture skill council of india said please source us source us a supervisor source us uh, technical skill people they couldn't give us one resume one resume that's the reality sir and that's these are problems which we need to figure out and make solutions out of professional nursery we have government nursery after government nursery after government nursery this year 70000 rupees worth of seedlings seeds 70000 rupees worth of seed from a poly house were devastated by a government nursery in hodel you know with no accountability they just turned and said aapka seed nahi chal raha hai usi company ka seed Oh, Lord, can see it. We gave it to a private nursery with seedlings returned in a month's time. Look, imagine what can happen to a farmer. Seventy thousand rupees farmer के लिए मर गया वो. He's dead. एक डिले हुआ वो अलग बात. But loss of seventy thousand rupees is a big issue. These are unaccountable organizations floating around in India. Infrastructure providers. You don't have quality infrastructure providers. If I wanted to buy a computer, I can call ten companies. and say hey give me a you know professional stuff uh, as far as you know uh, computers are concerned or any kind of uh, technology in agriculture infra providers they are next to nothing essentially milte hi nahi hai ab bolo poly house laga do aapko dhoondne se ek banda milta hai tech provider extremely bad connection hello uh, is it not clear i i you i i you will uh, i am having extremely bad uh, uh are you able to i don't know me? how others are facing but i am facing i am getting it loud and clear and hear you visible we are we are able to listen it clearly we are able to listen it very clearly yeah. sound is completely clear yeah, yeah. no issue yeah, is coming no issue okay. the sound is clear yeah skanji there is some uh, again tech yeah the tech providers you know you talk of drip irrigation 
You have one or two good companies, actually. You know, earlier there used to be net of M generation, generation has vanished bankrupt. Now you don't find quality providers of technology. You don't, if, again, I go back to, I'm a, from a telecom and IT. You ask for a computer, you get 10 absolutely amazing brands in computer. You ask for drip irrigation, you have one good company in net of M standing right now. John Deere is the other one, but anyone, there is no local company like Jan Irrigation went away. No local company which can stand, or oh, I can provide you amazing tech support on whatever product you are buying. So a huge issue as far as tech uh, availability. Electricity availability. So yeah, every state, see again, you know, uh, every forum has these people, you know, uh, who talk about it, electricity free mein milti hai. Aapko kya problem hai? Oh, kehne ke liye bahut achcha hai. I'll tell you what the reality is. Yes, electricity is free of charge. What time the electricity comes, you don't know. Whether it will come today, you don't know. It will come at 4 o'clock in the morning, you don't know. It will come at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you don't know. You seed a seed, now you have to give water, sit down. We were shocked. You know, if I had to run my company's business, that electricity, I was dependent, I don't know electricity will come. I wouldn't have run the business. Look at what farmers are going through. You say, sir, at night, you will get water at night. And at night, who is going to run the tube bell? You think what you are going to do. Because free electricity is going to run at night. You know, these are seed. When you put seed, you think that seed doesn't get water. Within a time frame, seed will be in a horrible condition. And now you're talking about small and marginal farmer. So think from his perspective. Light doesn't give water, you don't have water. So genuine, genuine issues and we, which we really need to find. You know, big things are all right, you know, but what do you want to do on the road? That those, these are those things. Selling and market, uh, market, marketing. What we learned, unlike Dhan and this, there is complete unpredictability in fruits and vegetables. What will the plant be made of the mood of the plant? It will give you 200 kilo of water. Then it will sleep for 7 days. फिर एक दिन मूड बनेगा उसको 400 किलो दे देगा। तो इट्स अ ह्यूज अनप्रेडिक्टेबिलिटी यू नो यू एंड दैट कीप्स द फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल फार्मर ऑन द चोज एसेंशियली। यू कैन्ट धान और वीट में फार्मर वो आता है ऐसा करके वो छड़कता है, सीड्स लगाता है, उसके बाद पानी देता है स्प्रिंकलर से, उसके फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल में कोई टाइम ऐसा नहीं होता जहाँ फार्मर को काम नहीं करना पड़े डेट इज़ व्हाई वेरी लेस फार्मर्स डू फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल संजय जी थोड़ा टाइम का शॉर्टेज है सो आई एम ऑलमोस्ट डन आई एम ऑलमोस्ट डन इन फाइव मिनट्स प्राइस वेरिएबिलिटी एंड पेमेंट्स दोस्त अदर बिग सेलिंग एंड and farm management. So another thing which I let me show you, you know, I mean, while we talked about great opportunities, etc., for particularly for fruits and vegetables, it's an intense engagement and involvement, unlike green cultivation. You can't, if you are leaving it, you know, leaving it unattended, leaving it at, on the mercy of supervisors or farm hands, this is a business which can go for rot essentially very, very quickly. So I'll just take you very, very quickly, you know, in two, five, three minutes. Finish it off. This is what we have done in AgriTech Enablers since uh, September of 2020 when we started the company till last season. The, we leased a polyhouse, which is a acre of polyhouse, but didn't do, because it's a proof of concept. So this was the state of affairs when we took the polyhouse. Marijuana was growing inside the polyhouse because the polyhouse owner didn't grow anything for the last six, seven months since February of 2020 till September when we took it over. Uh, we prepared, spent huge amount of time in uh, soil preparation, cleaned up the entire polyhouse, did so excellent, get, got the soil testing done, got nematode testing done, which came it neg negative. Uh, just that, that uh, farm equipment which you see is a rota rotavator. So you go to the scientist, they'll tell you, Bhaiya, rotavator se aapko apna soil prepare karna hai. just to get the rotavator itself was a huge issue. No one had a rotavator, and most of the people didn't hear, farmers didn't hear what the rotavator is essentially. Anyways, so these were the challenges which we were facing. This is what we did as far as soil preparation. Then October is when we first sowed the plants essentially. So these are mulching which we are doing, some beds essentially. So, you know, 
uh, October 15th was when we inaugurated the polyols from a standpoint of, uh, you know, uh, doing the, and it's a very, very scientific way of really uh, farming. Uh, October 30th, open farm, two acre open farm on 100% drip irrigation. On the left hand corner, you see drip irrigation essentially and mulching, that's what we did for uh, 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 open farm. Uh, October 30th is when we planted the first seed as far as open farm is concerned. Within November, you know, early part of November, we start seeing the results essentially. So that's cucumber. Uh, the cucumber in the uh, uh, cucumber started really showing up in the polyhouse and outside is zucchini. Uh, we harvested December 9th is when we harvested and did the first sale uh, of cucumber. This is English cucumber. Uh, that's the quality of cucumber, which we are selling zucchini and bok choy. And we start really getting, uh, that's a produced zucchini, yellow zucchini, green zucchini, bok choy. February, uh, iceberg showed up, various other kind of tomatoes showed up, broccoli showed up, uh, beetroot showed up, along with zucchini, etc. And then uh, in March, we had cherry tomatoes, red cherry tomatoes from the polyhouse, yellow cherry tomatoes from the polyhouse. Uh, from uh, open farm, we had uh, uh, spring onions. We had null call. Uh, April again, now April, the capsicum, red and yellow capsicum started really coming up. So, uh, and then tori uh, in the open farm, that's what we had planted in the open farm for the summer season. Uh, and in the summer, we had planted corn sweet corn, so that also started really coming in, and brinjal. All together, there were 17 uh, crops, essentially, 15 crops, which we had, uh, uh, sorry, um, 19 crops, which we had really planted uh, to really get a handle on it. So it's an amazing experience in terms of a very large variety of, uh, you know, the positives which came out, top quality produce. It's 100% compliant to FSSA standards because of uh, precision fertigation, our fertilizer consumption is minimal. Our produce is as good as organic. We don't do organic farming. We do use Jeeva Amrit. We do use manure and all, but we don't claim that we are organic, but our produce is 100% pesticide free, FSSAI compliant and tested and by an ABL lab. Our net promoter score is 99%, which means 99% of our B2B, B2C and Monday customers were repeat customers. And 99% of the orders, 99.9% .9 of the orders were delivered as per expected quality quantity. This is, we ran it like a business. Excellent sales channel, 18% we sold through B2C channels, business to consumer directly, B2B channels, which is non mundi through neighborhood stores, through online uh, channels, and then of course through Monday, 24%. Core technology, which really helped us deliver absolutely amazing quality was precision fertigation and precision farming. We do extensively, we monitor moisture through instruments, light, uh, you know, we monitor pH level, TDS of the water, continuously essentially to ensure, and then of course, precision fertigation to ensure top quality produce. And of course, we overcame massive and pervasive nematode parasite, which showed them in the crops, which even the RAI couldn't believe that nematode can really show up in the crops, like, you know, spring onion and celery and uh, some of the other crops essentially. We delivered 19 tons of vegetable and half the season. So that's what uh, our uh, first uh, season really went. Second season is ongoing right now with amazing results so far. Uh, that was all uh, for me to really share. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, Sanjay Ji, for a wonderful narration and very hard code and direct communication to all of us. We welcome that. Uh, though it uh, took certainly time, but definitely when you have to put facts, you know, it takes time. And I can see that uh, you have very well pointed out that uh, the, we, we need to move to the next level of planning, distribute the production, I would say train the farmers, which is also very important, organize the microfinances, that is also one of the concern areas, diversify our production, crops and vegetables. I would say that you talked about OD, uh, OPOC and you know, the one district, one product. Since India has got all the climates of the world, probably we can try OPOC, one product for one country. You know, we, we can uh, you know, have tie-up with the countries, you know, and for them we can produce, you know, those some product, special products. 
and uh, of course we agree that cooperative model of farming amul model of farming that is the upcoming and is extremely important so thank you indeed uh, sanjay ji for a very heartening and a very thorough analysis of all the problems which the indian farming uh, community is facing and which is desirable to have for them so now i would request you know next uh, uh, because uh, uh see we have to just say uh, because less interaction and more uh, what you call less presentation and more interaction that's what i feel should be our approach now and i would like to invite uh, uh, kartik jairaman ji uh, let me tell you kartik jairaman ji uh, you know has got uh, he he is a successful agripreneur based at chennai and he has got uh, 80000 farmers associated with him and servicing almost 1 lakh consumers every day and he deals not only with raw vegetables but raw packed processed dairy products everything so i will not take much time i would uh, say in 5 minutes or less than that kartik ji you tell and then so that you know more things will be clarified when people ask questions from you Karthik Jairaman ji. Thank you, Dubey ji. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, I think in the interest of time, I will not go through a slide deck. I will just talk about what we are doing, and I'm happy to interact and uh, you know uh, respond to any questions. Uh, firstly, thank you for having me on this forum. I am a, I'm not an IIT Kanpur alumnus. I'm an IIT yeah. Madras alumnus, but I guess we are part of the larger family. Of course, yeah. my uncle is from IIT Kanpur, and one of our investors also is from yeah. IIT Kanpur. So there is some linkage. I think most of the, the esteemed speakers before me have touched upon the problem statements on most elements of agriculture. I would therefore just touch upon it and quickly move to the solutions that we are working on. I think the first and most critical statement that I picked up earlier was on the agri supply chain. We can debate on whether we are surplus or not, uh, uh, but we are a large producer of food. But uh, as pointed out by the esteemed speaker earlier, we lose a lot of it as well. Uh, you know, the reason for the supply chain is uh, the, the this issue is the length of our supply chain. We keep, of course, the, this issue becomes emotionally fraught the moment we talk about the length of the supply chain with middlemen, artias, etc. they play an essential role it is i think they are being uh, unnecessarily painted a certain color but they play an essential role in the supply chain because as was mentioned earlier our production is fragmented on the one side which means every field produces a, a sub economic quantity in terms of transportability uh, for us to transport we need at least an 8 ton truck for fresh produce and a 25 ton truck load for grains and staples our fields do not produce as much and therefore you need consolidators so you have multiple layers of consolidators uh, i will come to how they as uh, lubricate the financial part of the supply chain as well because as rightly said uh, the the agri production funding as well as value chain funding is done by these in, intermediaries on the other side which most people don't look at very seriously our consumption points are also very fragmented just to give you some data uh the all of the united states buys its uh, food and groceries from just 38307 outlets and these are reducing as i speak to you because of amazon uh, india buys its food from nearly 12 million outlets and nobody really knows how many uh, stores we buy our food from what this means is disaggregation is also important each of our outlets are small and we have to feed them daily because they are very very smart they don't waste food none of our retailers waste food none of us waste food at our homes but they have to be fed and therefore there are several layers of disaggregation we have estimated between 5 and 11 layers for every category of food that we deal with and obviously these layers add to complexity there are three direct effects and one subtle effect that this uh, results in number one the direct effect obviously uh, each of the intermediaries operating has to make their margins it may be 3% 7% 10% they have to make their margins so it is not one middleman making super normal profits that is creating the low realization at the farm but many people making slivers of profits that causing the uh, realization impact this is the first learning that we had the second is uh, repetitive transport and handling of the product each of which adds to the cost you have hamali charges you have uh, uh, bagging charges you have transportation charges in often non optimal vehicles along the way all of this adds to the cost the third is the uh, concomitant loss in the supply chain jo supply chain mein products aa rahe hain if you take fresh produce 
it's actually not transporting goods it is passenger transport it is like ambulance movement fresh produce is like critical care patient which is still alive but we don't handle it like an ambulance movement we handle it like goods and consequently aapko losses ho jate hain ye supply chain mein between 20 and 25% the subtler effect which is actually most devastating jo hai it is the disconnect between demand and supply agar aap hamare consumption habits dekhe to today they have become more or less inelastic or it has also even become non seasonal log abhi mangoes mang rahe hain november mein people are asking for apples throughout the year so consumption has become non seasonal and it is also price inelastic however supply is very volatile there are three effects uh, uh, three drivers for this pehle jo hai seasonality which is obviously there uh, and uh, there will be some volatility due to that some commodities can be stored few in india many more outside india but uh, some storage technologies can address that the second is climate management and climate change this is real um uh, we can dis- debate the reasons for climate change but the effect of climate change is real and the third is really farmer not producing to demand but farmer producing to perceived demand agar ek mandi area mein kolar malur uh, mandi aap le le to ye nahi to chikblapur le to maybe there may there is a localized effect of uh, a pest attack or something that reduces arrivals because arrivals are reduced prices shoot up in that mandi and all the neighboring mandis there is a corresponding effect of prices shooting up and prices when prices shoot up all the farmers associated with the mandi consider that as demand actually going up and consequently there is over investment in cultivation and prices crash november mein tomato was 60 to 80 rupees at the farm gate main aapko likh ke deta hu march mein 2 rupaye hoga 3 rupaye hoga you will see all the headlines about farmers throwing tomato on the roads ye ab main abhi 11 bar dekh chuka hu so how are uh, 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 what has happened in the last decade or two is there are three enablers that we have seen one we have better roads pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana ke wajah se we are able to reach farmers directly using pickup trucks uh, you don't need a farm tractor or a, uh, you know a, a, a bullock cart or equivalent to reach the farmers agar ye possible hai to milk runs possible hai we can run a milk run and directly pick up material from multiple farm gates the second is a democratization of data everybody has access to some basic application if not anything at least whatsapp the, the children of farmers are making farmers go to war whatsapp and we've seen this penetrate more in southern and western india so communication of uh, the same information which is demand information is possible instantaneously teesra jo cheez hai it is the uh, digitization of money main upi ke bare mein baat nahi kar raha hu i am talking about our humble imps Uh, which is may, which is the only instrument that we use as a company to move money in la, you know to large number of farmers at zero cost so money agar digitize hota hai to money moves instantly this supply chain was working uh, as vidyarthi ji was pointing out earlier this is a cash supply chain and jinke paas cash hai jo jo bhi source ho cash ka they are the guys who are lubricating the supply chain and cash is physical money aur ek peculiar behavior hai cash ka hamari material jo hai farmer ka that goes linearly in the supply chain cash rotate okay or rotate, rotate okay wapas jata hai so the amount of working capital that is locked up is uh, fully borne by the farmer so we said ye jo teen disruptions hue hain in india mein can we build a model on top of that and that's what we have attempted to build we run a direct supply chain that deals with all categories of food other than meats we deal with fresh produce grains and staples as well as dairy and uh, we collect uh, we engage with a large number of farmers predominantly through fpos and also through aggregators where fpos are not yet formed and in many cases we run our own collection centers as well dairy etc we run our own collection centers so uh, the the idea is that we are able to capture and predict our demand to about 80% accuracy in the short term and to about uh, 75 to 80% accuracy in the medium term so with the with one base of farmers we communicate our demand on the day before harvest or one day before our requirement consequently the farmer has a and we also communicate pricing to the farmer the way pricing is done is also transparent we have 180 entrepreneurs who are connected to our platform who capture mandi benchmark data across the our geography uh, our target price is calculated on that basis and fed so that there is no discretionary decision making here pura transparency mein farmers can choose whether to supply to us or not if they choose to supply we send them a purchase order when the farmer brings their material it is uh, in case of milk obviously the tss is measured on the spot and it is inverted and grn if it is fresh produce it is graded sorted and gr and at the collection center itself immediately after that the farmer gets a note uh, saying how much the company owes the farmer and between 3 and 15 days depending upon the nature of the intermediary 
if, if, if it's a direct farmer, they get paid in three days. If it's an FPO, they get paid in 15 days. Now we have enabled financing for the FPOs as well, so that uh, there is a lot of lines available. So value chain financing enabled KIM, because which they get the money instantly. And we pay the financier after 45 days. So this material is moved directly from our collection centers to our distribution centers in the urban areas. Or where processing on each it is flowed the flowed through processing. For example, grains, obviously you'll have to flow it through millers and then to packing and repacking and then delivery. So we try and flow it through processes. We don't own any of these assets. We have a set of uh, uh, partners where our quality people are there to make sure the quality is maintained. Then they come to distribution centers, which are heavily automated. For example, if you take fresh produce, uh, when the crates of fresh produce come, typically you'll find people running around moving these crates and the productivity is low, damage is high, and there are a lot of errors that happen in material accounting. Uh, in our case, we have built a conveyorized and robotized system where uh, as soon as the crate is placed on the conveyor, the barcode is scanned, the, the material is reweighed using check weighers, GRN, and if a customer order has it is mapped against a customer order and sent out directly to the customer. The robot arm will uh, read the barcode and say, this is against a particular customer and it send it to the uh, relevant truck. Neither it goes into storage. So this uh, integration is something that we have done. All of these pieces taking, you know, our customers who are small retailers or modern trade chains or Horeca hotels and restaurant customers can place orders on an app. If they aren't tech savvy, we have field sales people who can go there, they go on fixed beats. Again, we have a Salesforce automation platform that has been built in-house and they can go and take orders on behalf of the customers. It is these orders that flow into our planning module and they are converted into short-term forecasts which go to our collection center. So the whole technology is integrated into one platform. The benefit of this is the farmer knows our demand before they harvest. So they are able to adjust their plan and therefore their wastage is reduced and our wastage is reduced. Uh, secondly, uh, we work with a number of farmers in a medium term uh, arrangement called Outgrow, which is our agri extension program. It, uh, we only open it to farmers who are supplied to us for four seasons or more. Unke baad, uh, we tell them if you want, if you become part of our program, we will uh, lift all your production through the year, but the crop planning has to be done as per our requirement. Yaha we do a few other interventions. For example, if a farmer has two acres, so what happens is in crops like single harvest crops like uh, cauliflower or cabbage, they'll plant the entire two acres. And uh, all the neighbors would have done the same. And that day when everybody harvests, the prices crash. Secondly, uh, uh, you know, they need external labor. In Tamil Nadu, labor availability is a huge issue. So they need external labor to come for the planting and for the harvesting. So instead, what we do is we break the plot up into 16, uh, you know, smaller plots. And in each plot, they plant in the first week, second week, third week, fourth week, etc. This hedges them and it hedges us. We get assurance that we will get in the material from the Farmer also gets hedged because if the market price goes up and down, only one of the plots will suffer. The other plot will get back normal income and so on. So, it gets hedging. Ho jata hai. Secondly, uh, they don't need external labor. The farmer and the family are enough to do the work. Obviously, it's hard work. It's a different way of cultivation, but they get hedged. Now, we've started working with the farmers for additional uh, activities. For example, uh, how do you get to zero budget farming? How do you get to multi-cropping, intercropping, and border cropping? How can you substitute crops and uh, you know uh, trap crops instead of pesticide usage, etc.? And the way we did this is we of course have an app where all these good practices are shared. We have AI-based disease detection. But as Vidyati ji said, it's theoretical. Ho jata hai. So we made our own farm. In our farm, we have four acres. We grow 100 species of uh, cash, uh, cash and food crops. And in those, uh, in that farm, not a single input comes from outside other than the seed. Everything else is from within the farm. We have demonstrated a 10 to 15 percent yield improvement and a 29 percent cost saving by doing this so far. So, is farm may we bring farm our farmer communities for training? They are free to take whatever practices they want. For example, we built a water harvesting system in the farm, which is basically uh, occupying as minimum land as possible. And uh, it, ba it ba basically goes and recharges the bore well. The bore itself is solar powered and the panels are kept over the farm pond so that ev evaporative losses are minimized and agricultural land is not used for solar panels. So, like uh, Vidyati ji said, the power is coming, but the power is coming at 2 There is no point in that power coming in because it's impossible for the farmer to be there. So, this way, and what we have done now is we have integrated the bore with autonomous fertigation. Uh, so, it tracks, we are able to track the weather with sensors and trigger the drip based on the weather and uh, humidity conditions and that is working reasonably well for us.
So all the practices that we learn in our farm, farmers can either physically come and learn, or we make it available through our Outgrow app. Both of these are possible, and Outgrow is a, an app which operates in six in Indian languages. Uh, obviously, uh, English is also there, but it operates in six Indian languages. Our idea here is that if the farmer becomes more and more demand aligned and more and more efficient in production, then their effective income goes up, and we split the benefits. Uh, or in our case, the more technology we use to align. Uh, demand and supply and more automation we use we become more efficient because in supply chain mein margin utna nahi hai jitna log samajhte hain so we are trying to squeeze it as much as possible using automation so that we also make some money in the process and we are able to pass on some benefit to the customer as well so today we operate in uh, we deliver to about 500 locations across southern india uh, we have a base of 100000 customers and we work with about 85000 farmers we move about 900 tons per day of uh, fresh produce grains and staples and dairies so that is us in a nutshell uh, it's still a very early stage frankly mm -hmm. we are at uh, we are 6 years old so i keep telling my team we are only in first standard so we shouldn't think that we have arrived but uh, we we are excited we think we can do a lot more and we see a lot more potential thank you indeed kartik ji you know let me tell you uh, there of us uh, one more thing that he has been the man of transformation in fact he has done a lot of transformations when he was working in tata motors mckinsey uh another uh, company is in fact during his career so he has again brought in a transformation in the agriculture also what uh, uh, you notable things you have uh, coined in fact you know middlemen are not really the bad people in fact they are helping in the integration like it's a uh, you know you don't get everything uh, you can't do everything on your own so middlemen if they are uh shares or margins are rationalized probably they can work well they get employed it, it adds to the employment generation also and uh, the the entire business grows as far as i understand probably what you said and then the fresh product should be treated you know like uh, you know transporting in an ambulance you know rather than you know uh, transporting dead uh, vegetables in fact we have a solution today he will be presenting you which can keep the vegetables uh, fresh for uh, many days and uh, the, this disruptive developments which you said that transport uh, demonetization uh, sorry uh, digitization and uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, democratization of data all these three four things in fact they have definitely played a role to uh, bring in these changes and make uh, your success visible so man farmer hedging method also very uniquely designed by you water management and training to farmers are really appreciable so thank you indeed kartik ji for wonderful uh, input and we will be asking more question like how to get associated with you and probably people will ask questions now uh, uh, taking it forward i will invite uh, uh, by kamala nand ji <laughs> he uh, let me tell you he he is a very very senior is officer highly uh, accomplished person and uh, he he had been in the board of governors for three iims you know including i am ahmedabad and uh, he has got a uh, lot of vision in his mind lot of fire in his belly and he is you know he talks less and believes more in action so today he is there in fact to put us into action into momentum the technocrats need to be given momentum that's what his uh, uh, you know what you call belief is so i invite dr uh, uh, kamal kamlanand bhai kauri ji uh brother ek to sabko pranam it was a great really wonderful it was very educative highly you know influencing type of uh, interaction one two uh, i was in the planning commission and uh, uh, i have a lot to share but i will just finish in two three minutes point number one how many of these initiatives are without grant rebate subsidies because we are working on replicating hope models we call it via models viable investment opportunities jinone kar diya without grant rebate subsidies and we have come out with about uh, um, about five uh, booklets 
on the people who have worked in forest cows animal husbandry agriculture without uh, gramodyog without any grant rebate subsidies so our first effort is to learn from doers without grant rebate subsidies number 2 we believe in now area approach so we have 6000 blocks in india 6000 blocks in india if every performer maybe csr maybe corporate sector maybe iit maybe iim um, uh, maybe university if they could adopt a block we call it mab mass awareness and block adoption program with 100 crore viable investment from the banks at a normal rate of interest we say if grant rebate subsidy is available let it be a incentive let us not work for grant rebate subsidy my last two points uh sanjay bhai i would like to interact with you and also kartik ji because aap logo ne kar diya hai aur we have number of people in the rural business hub and our additional action and people's planning commission and rural infrastructure investment information galvanizing services so we have planted number of change facilitators और वो सबको हम बोलते हैं कि भाई लेट अस ट्राई टू वर्क विदाउट ग्रांट रिबेट सब्सिडी दैट मींस मार्केटिंग दैट मींस कॉस्ट रिडक्शन दैट मींस कन्वर्जेंस दैट मींस लर्निंग फ्रॉम इनोवेटर्स तो हमको बड़ी खुशी होगी और मैं आपका बड़ा आभारी हूं आज मुझे मौका दिया और एक दो सुझाव है एक इसको आप रेगुलर कीजिए रेगुलर कीजिए और इसको एक स्टेयरिंग एंड स्टरिंग ग्रुप बना दीजिए एस एच जी स्टियरिंग एंड स्टरिंग ग्रुप एक दूसरा इसमें अगर कुछ आईआईएम के भी जोड़ सके बिकॉज आई वॉज बोर्ड ऑफ गवर्नर आई वॉज ऑन द बोर्ड ऑफ गवर्नर ऑफ द थ्री आई आई एम एज अ डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ नेशनल प्रोडक्ट काउंसिल और मैं भी आई आई एम से ट्रेनिंग किया हुआ हूं तो एक कन्वर्जेंस एंड फिंगर्स टू फिस्ट लास्ट पॉइंट ब्लॉक एडॉप्शन करने से हमारा जो गति है बिकॉज वी हैव बीन कमिटिंग द सेम मिस्टेक्स इन द लास्ट सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर सेम रिपीटेशन रिपीटेशन प्लानिंग कमीशन में बढ़िया बढ़िया डॉक्यूमेंट्स है मैंने मेरी मेरी किताबें है एंड आई हैव बीन फाइटिंग इवन इन द प्लानिंग कमीशन एज ए फाइट दैट दिस इज नॉट बिल्डिंग अप द पीपल्स कॉन्फिडेंस सेल्फ रिलायंस लोकलाइजेशन एंड वी आर मेकिंग देम मोर एंड मोर डिपेंडेंट ऑन अदर स्टेट वर्ल्ड बैंक लोनिंग और उसके पाप बहुत हमको झेलने पड़ रहे हैं कोरोना एंड चैलेंजेस ऑफ दिस क्लाइमेट इमरजेंसी क्लाइमेट इमरजेंसी along with our population and dates and work culture and corruption and all those things it's an excellent time to network and i wish you take the lead that iit and also others including iim could adopt a block and put in all their expertise resources we will be very happy to network work and move forward with you in solving the problems and replicating good models meri bahut bahut shubhkamnaye bahut acha laga aur apan chahenge ki milkar isko gati badhaye accelerating the speed is very important now aur usme climate emergency and biodiversity challenges along with all these other uh, you know uh, crisis areas there are a golden opportunity for us to work without grant rebate subsidy by marketing the unmarketed india thank you very much great pleasure i am obliged we will network thank you, thank you very much bye bye सबको प्रणाम नमस्ते थैंक यू डेट सर आपने लेट मी टेल दैट डॉक्टर कमलानंद जी ने 40 किताबें भी लिखी हुई हैं 40 बुक्स ही हैज टू हिज क्रेडिट एंड यू नो द कांसेप्ट व्हिच ही हैज नोटेड यू नो दैट विदाउट ग्रांट रिबेट एंड सब्सिडी इफ वी कैन बी सक्सेसफुल देन डेफिनेटली दैट इज द रियल सक्सेस यू नो दैट द रियल इनोवेशन and uh, uh that's a your suggestion to adopt one block by iit and iim fraternity is definitely highly uh, motivating and a lot of people would be in fact uh, uh, interested to take lead into it with the guidance with your guidance and with the guidance of professor jp sharma also has done lot of work in this and the performers like uh, sanjay ji and kartik ji and lot of other people in fact we can take it forward definitely sir so now uh, let me uh, let me invite uh, uh, kaushalendra kaushalendra singh ji 
uh, you know, uh, as uh, Sanjay ji was telling that he, they, they are working on a wonderful model where they have adopted uh, 40,000 villages and all the incomes income generated out of their activity goes back to the farmers. It's a wonderful model. They are really doing, you know, uh, a good job. And uh, the brain behind it, of course, they are all both are ideas promoted by uh, uh, Professor Shastri, Relochan Shastri. He is a professor at I am Bangalore, and he has done his PhD from uh, MIT, Boston. So uh, he uh, he could not be here because and Roshanji is the chief uh, executive officer and he's from IIT Kanpur. Uh, so I would like to uh, invite you, Goshelji, uh, be precise, just put your uh, uh, things, you know, in five minutes so that we get more time for question and answers. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Sanjayji, for bringing me to the, this group. Sanjayji has been promoting us and helping us. So I'll just be quick. So I will just share one slide. So. Yes, uh, there is an input. Uh, till then, Kaushalenji, you are uh, presenting. Uh, the, we request all the members to please put their queries in the chat box till the Q&A session is going on. Uh, so Yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, what exactly, uh, uh, you know, like if you have any questions, just you can put in the chat box or just wait for the question answer session. You know, we don't want to uh, put questions and answers in between because that will then uh, while away more time yeah right okay. so yeah. Uh, so center for collective development is an ngo which was found by professor Talochan sastri in 2005 and his vision was to replicate amul model for non dairy farmers right so basically what we do this uh, ccd uh, we go to uh, villages we form their uh, cooperatives and we bring the uh, create bank accounts and uh, bring one or two villages in one cooperative and at the district level we create uh, all these cooperatives under one federation right so uh, uh, basically uh, from ngo we have field staff so one field officer generally takes care of 10 to 15 villages or 10 to 15 cooperatives his work is to inform the farmers that how they can benefit by coming together and you no know, doing marketing together right so uh, basically in a typical uh, uh, value chain a farmer sells to an aggregator aggregator takes his crops to a processor near nearby processor from that processor the grains go to some uh, value addition companies like itc britannia and from there it goes to the consumers right so what we have done is uh, with through this field officer we actually uh, pool the produce of the farmers together and we help them sell to the best price possible in nearest mondays right so by this we are helping them with two three ways one is basically they don't get cheated on weights uh, they get uh, proper prices for what uh, their crops right and then they save on the transportation so we are not we are we are just focusing on marketing create their cooperatives process their produce and then help them sell together and bring economies of scale on uh, basically trans saving on transportation cost on input right so this is our achievement till now uh, we are uh, right now we are working with 240000 farmers right so we are present in uh, An anandpur district this is Puttaparthi, which is in Anandpur, where we have created a federation of 25,000 farmers. So Sri Satyasai Raitu is their federation. In Utnur, this is in Adilaba district. There we have reached to 15,000 farmers. And all these farmers are uh, basically 15,000 farmers. They grow turdal, soya, and cotton. And they are under a federation named Praja Mitra Raitu. So this one is around 150 villages. Sri Satyasai Raitu working in 300 villages right pillar we have mango farmers cooperatives where we have brought them together under this balaji raitu federation so at the district level here uh Parthi, we have uh, peanut farmers so we have helped them set up the peanut processing also so right now these farmers basically pool their peanuts they bring to this district level processing unit there they 
decorticate and do the sorting grading of peanuts and sell peanuts in b2b to reliance more and other businesses right now kaushalendra do you want me to share your uh, chart because that will be easier for everybody to follow if that's yeah. all right with you uh, i am sharing right now uh, uh, are you not able to see this yeah no, no. we are uh, not able to see a chart it's a it's a button next to the raised hands yeah. raise hand yeah, yeah. There, there you go yeah. <laughs> yeah. so is basically ccd is the umbrella organization which is organizing farmers in districts right now we are in four districts as well, as was telling puttaparthi is in anandpur there we have 25000 farmers and sri satyasai raitu is their federation where they do the processing of peanuts and sell peanuts together to b2b businesses right in utnur they have prajamitra raitu federation at district level where they have the tur dal processing unit so they make tur dal and sell that in balaji raitu federation they bring their table variety banganpalli alfonso mallika mangoes and they sell those together in b2b to all these uh, retailers big retailers and in maharashtra yavatmal two years back we started this here this gramin adivasi shetkari so basically we are creating their village level cooperatives and then at the district level federation the processing happens at the district level at the village level our field offices help them pool their produce and sell into the nearest mandis and also for processing bring those to the processing center and process and uh, at the village level we have uh, their bank accounts all these are uh, created under uh, cooperative act and uh, all the uh, uh, they we also conduct their monthly uh, general body meeting and also uh, um, annual general body meeting and we help them set up their board and we help them select their board members and it's a very democratic process we have set up some rules where basically we don't allow any political persons to be part of the board and we say that uh, if you are doing any other business you should not be in the leadership of the board so all those uh, three four things which we have done this actually has helped them you uh, know organized properly so right now our government is spending lot of money on creating uh, of fpos what we have done is we have shown that how we can organize them together make sure that they believe in themselves and they are coming together and working together and then they are reaping benefits of doing together so ccd oversees it but most of the decisions are taken by the farmers and their board members and we actually supervise all that so this happens at the b2b level uh, and then what professor has come up we should do some value addition so peanut sells at 110 120 per kg but peanut butter peanut oil all these products sell at 300 400 rupees kg and if each of these federations they come up with their own brand then all of them will spending money in creating their uh, you know branding and marketing so we have created one common brand farm veda and this farm veda is actually working with all these uh, federations and so from puttaparthi we buy peanuts and we make peanut butter peanut oil peanut chikki and we are selling through farm veda uh, through online and offline channels right uh, we have also started selling tur dal we are also working up uh, on soya bean processing unit so this is the model where uh, farm veda is like the amul brand right this is owned by these uh, federations and the profit of farm veda all goes back to these federations so ultimately the benefits of this value addition are going back to these 40000 farmers we are working together so this is the model we want to expand uh, all over india and uh, we seek all of your support like uh, uh, some people can you know uh, take uh, care of one district or one block we are actually happy to pass on all the learnings which we have done what all we need to do to make sure these fpos which are creating they actually 
end up doing lot business together and they you know take the benefit of it because that's the first step we are taking right now of creating a, a F federation and fpos but it will be very important that they are organized well and they do business and they focus on business and whatever money they are getting 18 lakhs 25 lakhs which were told that is utilized into business and gets into the business and they you know take benefit of it so we are you no know, happy to host any of you who wants to visit these cooperatives see how we are working we can uh, do exposure visits and all that so yeah so i hope uh, thank you thank you kaushalin you have very well uh, explained your model and in fact it suits to some of our objectives which have emerged out of this meeting today so right. uh, we will definitely uh, we we need to as uh, dr tauri said you know we need to take it forward uh, on a regular basis uh, i would request uh, very quickly nirmal ji uh, i can see very quickly please you know uh tell about your model because uh, let me tell you uh, nirmal agrawal ji is here he is uh, from it kharagpur very senior person and they have done wonderful job in the uh, tribal area of jharkhand where you know he has uh, created uh, in wonders you know with the tribal uh, farmers so kindly uh, finish it in a few minutes please you know i'm sorry you know thoda sa zara yeah please go ahead nirmal ji <laughs> unmute kariye you are you are muted that's right yeah yeah please go ahead go ahead yes thank you dubey ji and it is very good experience i have uh, joining this program and last two hours we learn a lot i'm just going to share in 5 minute what we are doing in west bengal i think west bengal was not represented till now so let me represent west bengal also we are a social organization gram samriddhi foundation and we are doing integrated village development activities in the villages of west bengal our activities are centered around jal zameen jungle janwar and then all five pillars of the development and our activities start with the training of the farmers six stage training we teach them about zero cost organic farming biogas plant then water harvesting ponds diversifying into fruits and vegetable from rice rice they earn hardly 5000 rupees per bigha and that's what we are trying to teach them ki okay you should diversify at least part of your land you should divert towards fruits and vegetable farming so that your family member gets at least one vegetable or one fruit every day or every week or every alternate day so that is another aspect we teach them is panchagavya with best healthcare and we are getting a very uh, significant result in healthcare due to that hygiene and healthy lifestyle also is part of our training and uh, we have got about 17 to 8, 20 full time volunteers in the different block one volunteer per block we want to we will reach a number of 50 full time volunteers in by the end of this year uh, end of this year 2022 and we are licensing with various self help group about 200 self help groups we are in contact with professionals and students of the technical institutions like iit kharagpur and uh, uh, bckv vidhan chandra kishi vidyalaya they work with us and we have got volunteers in calcutta who do various type of management planning and other aspects training of the farmers we want to do we are, we are doing for last 3 years we want to do 100 batch 2000 farmers this year and we want to plant uh, install 3000 biogas plants in the far, uh, home of the farmers that itself increases their income by 25000 rupees per annum zero cost farming with 5000 farmers we want to introduce rain water harvesting pond our mission is that because half of the land are rain fed and so after any season farmers are not able to do any cultivation unless they go with that deep tubal model of punjab so we want to uh, train farmers and uh, promote rain water harvesting ponds like 1 is to 20 you know in your land 120th part you just make a pond you get your fish you get your vegetable around the pond and you save water for the rest of the year 
diversifying into fruits and vegetable we plan to move to 20000 farmers and we want plan to in uh, plant 20 lakhs fruit trees roughly 80 to 100 fruit trees per farmer in half bigha land because most of the farmer in bengal are not even have one acre land so that figures which were being shown here are from other state in west bengal farm holding is pretty small many of the farmers have uh, just five decimal ten decimal or maybe half bigha maybe quarter bigha land one acre is means uh, some dreams and we want to uh, we we have a team which is working on uh, making fpos and we plan to have four fpo per district in west bengal in next three to four years and there will be a central body coordinating between fpos and working towards uh, development of the farmers in various way plantation just as i said we pl plan to plant 20 lakh trees and uh, that will cover roughly 5000 acre land spread over 20000 farmers and five uh, this will provide 5000 acre land for 20000 cows for grazing boon for environment and biodiversity which can be utilized for in future for honey cultivation that honey we are increasing in all area annual revenue farmers annual revenue for tree plantation itself will be roughly 40000 rupees per annum from half bigha land that is our estimate yeah, this is the rainwater harvesting pond just photographs that. just i will show some photographs and finish this is tree plantation we start with uh, puja and then uh, distribution of the tree in the plant and half bigha land per farmer is used for plantation this is the plantation pond this is the professor from iit kharagpur who is advising us on the pond this is a skill development training slide and sir slide is not moving any moment. issue yes slide presentation nahi aa rahi hai nirmal ji aapka slide is matlab stuck hai at one ah now it is here okay sir ek ek dikhaoge pehle se pehle se slide jo text tha wo dikha tha kya just run ha bilkul bilkul yes nahi pehle se karega photo these are the photographs please go to slide show please go to slide show uh, okay, I, slides so I started, but I think no, I have to do one by one. Ah, ek by ek karo, sir. Ek ek second dikhao, sir. Okay, this was uh, basically starting of our say, uh, this my presentation, Gram Samriddhi Foundation. These are the five pillars of the development: Jal Jamin, Jungle, Janwar, and Jan. These are the, our training module, which covers biogas, zero cost farming, rainwater harvesting, diversifying into fruits and vegetables, punch gap healthcare, and hygiene and healthy lifestyle. Then we have our team. We have we are the, uh, posting full time volunteers in each block one by one. And currently we have 17 full time volunteers in 17 blocks. And we are licensing with self help group. We have uh, local volunteers in Calcutta and uh, educational institutions. We want to, all those things I have covered, so I'll just show the slide and move forward. Because time is running out, question and answer ka time bhi dena padega thoda. We, we plan to, we have planted two lakhs tree this year in 2021, even during uh, this uh, pandemic period. And we plan to plant 20 lakhs tree next year, over 5,000 acres of the farmland, spread over 20,000 farmers in nine district and uh, this will give boon to biodiversity and sooner and later we'll add honey to our cultivation and this itself will give additional income of 40,000 to each farmer family which is means the current annual income of farmers are just as has been told 25,000 rupees per annum that comes to about 11 rupees per head per day that is the type of life they are staying living our aim is to triple the income in next two years. This is the rainwater harvesting reservoir. This is the tree plantation drive where we go and perform a small uh, Prakriti Puja and then uh, plant the trees in the farmer's land this way. Half Biga land is uh, uh, earmarked by each farmer where we plant about 100 uh, fruit trees of various varieties so that if farmer gets at least every month they get some fruits 
and uh, some of the tree plant, uh, start giving fruits in six months, some will take three years. So that way we have uh, selected a set of fruit trees. This is rainwater harvesting professor from IIT Kharagpur Agriculture Department helping us out. This is one of the Silai training and various other computer training and electrician training and various other trainings also we, we conduct at various villages. This is farmer's training, which I have been talking about. About 20 to 50 ladies or sometimes farmer, man, boys, young girls, various type of training. We have been organizing six days training and we have got a place near Khadakpur where farmers can stay for six days continuously. We have got space for their lodging and boarding and training everything near about 20 kilometers from Khadakpur. This is the small kitchen garden which we are uh, convincing each farmer to have their own kitchen garden because they cannot afford to buy uh, the vegetable from the market so they can cultivate in their spare land some vegetables. So, chalo jalaye deep wahan jahan abhi bhi andhera hai. So this is a small presentation. Dubeji told me to finish in five minutes so I try to Thank you. Asked. Thank you, Nirmal ji. So that Thank people you, can ji. have question and answer session. And I th I'm thankful uh, for Dubey yeah. ji for giving me opportunity. And hopefully we'll continue this program and bring it to logical conclusion in the next two years. Absolutely, Nirmal ji. You know, in fact, you have uh, explained a lot of things on ground, which we have been talking and discussing, you know, many of us. So uh, now next I request uh, Nick. Ki jha, you know, now we come to some inputs you know, required for the uh, agripreneurship, you know, the production and all those things. So Nikki Kumar Jha, he is uh, uh, doing PhD at IIT Kanpur, incubated at IIT Kanpur Incubation Center. And he has got a product which is very uh, important for all of us. In fact, we are talking about, you know, uh, what... Uh, uh, Karthik, you was talking about that we are transporting dead uh, vegetables. So he will ensure that the vegetables are transported in live condition and in good condition. Nikki, please take five minutes and put your slide and go ahead. Yeah, so uh, am I audible, sir? Hello. Yes, yes, yes. you are audible. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so thank you, everyone. So I am Nikki Kumar Chha. So I will present you my, about my startup that is Saptikrasi. So I'm very, very thankful to Professor uh, J.P. Sarma, sir, Vice Chancellor Scott Jammu. So uh, my this uh, uh, startup has... been incubated at Scott Jammu as well, sir, under the RKV Rafael program, apart from IT Anbor. So I'm very thankful to him as well. So I quickly uh, present my idea of uh, Saptikrasi, like um, just share my screen. Just give me a second. Is my screen visible? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, it's, now coming it's coming up now. Coming up now. Coming. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we at Subcrisy, which is a very young agri startup, uh, and uh, uh, we at Subcrisy has made our flexi product called Subji Koti or Preservator, which is world one of its kind uh, storage to extend the shelf life of fruits and vegetables anywhere between 3 to 30 days without using any kind of refrigerant or preservative or chemical so uh, what it needs it only needs 20 watt of power which is which can be given by uh, via a battery and it can uh, it uses a few liter of water per day for its operation nothing else the best part the best the beauty of this technology is that it can be assembled upon any suitable means of transportation whether it should be e-rickshaw thela truck tempo auto toto whatsoever it is it can be assembled on it and also in terms of deploy deployment it can be deployed on any any Terrain from Atak to Katak, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, it can be deployed because the entire weight of this story is only 10 kg. So everyone is quite familiar with the problem that 30 to 40 percent is going to waste it. And, and as 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 uh, one of the one of the uh, uh, guest was rightly saying that no technology is talking about small and marginal farmer. So yes, we are the one who is talking about small and marginal farmer, and we have devised our our, our, our technology keeping small and marginal farmer in in the in, in the center of the sphere 
and then we have designed the technology because i myself belong from a very small village so i carry the village background and from the village background i have seen the problem i have i, ha I have lived with the problem by because my region is in gangetic belt where there is a lot of production of fruits and vegetables so i have actually seen farmer throwing the potatoes and tomatoes on the road because they doesn't have enough uh, to 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 take it to the mandi so so everyone everyone here is very well known with the problem so i will just skip the problem part so uh, so what what like you know uh, if i talk about this this lady this is a hema devi this is in bhagalpur market itself she is losing she is losing 30 to 40% which is around 1 lakh rupees per year just because they doesn't have any adequate storage facility so she needs an accessible transportable and 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 affordable solution and here is our solution as you can see that our entire storage can be packed in a bag like this and then can, then it can be unfolded to create a on farm on field on market infrastructure and also it can be assembled assembled upon as you can see that we can even keep this keep this storage on thela so here the thela shows that it can go as decentralized as as a thela so this is this is what it is and it is solar of course it is solar power because it only needs 20 watt of power so so we have done a very extensive extensive trial on our on our product by keeping fruits and vegetable inside and outside outside the storage so inside you can see that these 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 all are the pictures which is inside and outside and we got a third party validation from arunachal pradesh government we got a third party validation we are getting a third party validation from uttar pradesh as well and and from and and and, and from kerala as well so basically in market where we are so we have rightly identified a huge market gap between no storage and cold storage so basically we are placing ourselves perfectly into that part that 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 there there, there is a there was a there was a solution needed into that in which the portability low uh, investment and maintenance cost wise it is very low and portability should be very high so so our subji koti is there so currently we are operating in uh, operating in four major regions that is uh, that is uh, bihar uttar pradesh northeast india and and of course uh, uh, in, in jammu kashmir as well so uh, how we are doing right now so currently we are creating awareness awareness among among our, our stakeholders via the partners like bank microfinance ngo self help groups agriculture institutes and fpos and currently we are doing direct sales to to institutions like wwf india we have recently recently sold we have recently sold to um, to uh, icci foundation we have recently uh, we have recently sold to to care india so these all the institutions based sales we are currently doing and also, also we are providing one year of after sales warranty so it's it's not about only the solutions it's also that like you know how much impact we are creating with our with our stories with our stories technology at our startup so here here we go that with a small very small investment the, I, I, let me tell you the price of this storage this is only 10000 rupees so in 10000 rupees you get a capacity of 200 to 250 kg storage and let me tell you that this 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 the, the impact with a small investment of 10000 rupees Uh, we are able to uh, uh, we are able to mitigate 1276.8 kg of co2 which is a very high number and and right now we have got the climate solver award for this and there the wwf world wildlife fund for nature has estimated that the global adoption of this technology can mitigate up to 3 million metric tons of co2 co2 emission so this is this is this is the what the impact which we are going to make apart from increasing the income of farmer apart from the health benefits and and all so these are some of these are some of our journey that we have in, uh, we have done pilots we have done deployed various models we have we have tested when we have like you know so this is our excellent team um, i myself has like you know do, doing a phd in design from iit kanpur my uh, rashmi jha is a biotechnologist we have the wonderful mentors like professor j ram kumar professor amita bandopadhyay jagdish sunkar jagdish sunkar work for works for nasa agriculture as well rahul patel and all we have a wonderful team to take it up so we dream to provide an affordable accessible and available storage solution to each and every small and marginal farmers so we are the one we are the one startup who is actually talking about a small and marginal farmer into putting putting them into the center part of the sphere so this is thank you we thank you everyone and thank you nikki ji uh, uh, nikki i think you have got a wonderful product which is required by all of us uh, how can, can we take... buy this how can uh, we buy this for the farm Uh, yeah, so really currently really you have to uh, pre order it on our website we have a long pre order list like we have thousands of pre orders now <laughs> and uh, <laughs> okay, okay. but uh, but what i'll do uh, on priority i can ship it to you sir all right okay. thank you <laughs> thank okay. you so this is a wonderful product and uh, now 
Yeah. See, now you have, when you produce, you preserve. But the thing is, you know, when you are producing, uh, it is also important that you the yield goes up. You know, how to increase your yield. That is ex extremely important. And we have a wonder man of this, uh, what you call, agripreneurship, uh, Mr. Prabhakar. Mr. D.K. Prabhakar, he has got, in fact, he's a, he's a scientist who has done, uh, who has innovated a powder, organic powder, which can be, in fact, used, and he will explain himself, uh, which increases not only the uh, uh, production and yield of the product, and it works from anything to anything, and it also uh, rejuvenates the soil. You know, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, over to you, please. Finish it fast, please, you know, just keep your watch in front and uh, so that we are able to ask questions from you, please. Yeah, sure, sir. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity you gave me. And also, I welcome all the members of the conversation. Sir, basically, I'm a biotechnologist working in the area of human health, plant nutrigenomics, as well as the livestock therapeutics and nutrition for the last uh, 26 years, like from 1995 onwards. And we thought of developing a technology that must be absolutely safe and a globally preferred organic formulation, which can support the farmers to enhance their productivity, quality of the produce, and also the soil resonation of the soil fertility, which are all the basic uh, facing problems of the present farmer. Plus, the government's, uh, I mean, to say slogan of uh, doubling the farmer's income. So we developed the formulation over a period of 20 long years using all the botanical derivatives, uh, a formulation which supports the farmer to double his productivity by uh, not only quantity, but also by means of the quality parameters. I mean to say the color, shape, size, the nutritional values, including the shelf life, three times increased shelf life, uh, along with the uh, competitive edge, even to shop them, I mean, to market them in the overseas markets, matching the export standards. And uh, as we all discussed of the uh, Indian uh, system and the marginal farmers, this technology is a technology which can really support any farmer, maybe he's having 10 cents of land, or maybe he's having 10,000 acres of land. He can take the support of this uh, formulation. It is only an input uh, which can be used as an additional input only. No need to uh, change their uh, cultivation practices, or no need to interfere in any of their uh, regular uh, inputs. Uh, nothing is needed. Simply they have to apply this product either one or two times just uh, uh, while the crop is going, I mean, are on young plants, plus at the time of pre-flowering stage. These two times application. Uh, these two applications comes in one packing as a one time, one acre uh, supporting nutrition. This can be applied in two stages, as I explained, by just adding it to some water, uh, recommended quantum of water by foliar spray only. Simply, instantly, the same crop, whatever they are getting the input, output with all their inputs, like uh, right from constant uh, land to finally the uh, investments by means of seeds, uh, flowers, I mean to say seeds, uh, inputs, uh, fertilizers, pesticides, everything they are investing and they are getting some amount of uh, productivity or yield. That can be simply doubled by means of applying just this one single product which also supports the quality of the produce to increase, which also supposed to reduce the end produce toxicity by 50%, which can be simply uh, understood by means of a laboratory test, which is going to support the uh, consumer's health also. The third point is, it is resonating the soil texture by means of uh, loosening the soil and also by making the soil to hold more fertility and also for regeneration of the inherent soil uh, natural fertility. So, by means of enhancing the productivity, by means of uh, making the agriculture sustainable, uh, sup by supporting the land resonation, 
and also by offering the farmer doubled income that is the minimum uh, word i can use but actually the farmer is going to make more and more money not double it is multiplied the very reason is for the first harvest he might be spending some thousands but for the second harvest i mean the second uh, uh, yield that is uh, the double yield he is hardly going to spend only one or two thousands to get the end produce and uh, he is going to get a quality produce that demands a uh, uh, high market price as well as uh, a healthy produce that really supports the end consumer and simultaneously it is going to resonate the soil fertility which can be visible within just 15 days of the application which can be understood by means of the uh, improvement in these um, i mean to say microflora of the soil uh, enhancement or enrichment of the soil fertility by means of the porousness by means of the enhancing the microflora strength and by means of the organic matter that collects while the culture is going on so all these things can happen at one go uh, along with the productivity enhancement which supports the nation with a more pro- productivity particularly this technology works on all the horticulture crops maybe they are fruits maybe they are vegetables or maybe they are uh, flowers and when it comes to uh, because we developed a technology that supports all the crops every crop i mean to say it's a multi crop genera technology so that it can support the uh, i mean to say even uh, the farmers of uh, um, uh, grains oil seeds or um, fiber crops they also will be benefited between 30 to 100 percent enhancement basing on the culture system as well as uh, uh, the seeds and other uh, supporting uh, features of the cultivation and this particular formulation we don't want to add another toxin to the agriculture so that we convert it into a 100 percent organic absolutely safe formulation over a period of 17 long years uh, our struggle this formulation is now away made available to the farmers by all means we are also start we started some manufacturing unit and we want to offer the marketing rates to any of the interested uh, marketing people or yeah, we are also prepared to transfer the technology if any entrepreneur or investor is ready to take over the same as yes, this technology this was also nominated to the world food prize by the central government in 2007 itself when it was in the laboratory status uh, it was tested well by the icr people and nominated it for the world food prize saying that even in case of the world population it gets doubled overnight this can feed the entire world if this is adopted by the farmers so that i can proudly say this technology is really going to serve the entire indian farmers maybe they are small or medium farmers or large cultivators or corporate cultivators or uh, contract farming cultivators whoever it is they can be well benefited instantly in the same crop yes we struggle to bring the technology from lab to land instantly not that to take any more time in whatever the crop they use the product without any uh, modifications in their culture country uh, systems maybe they are very native maybe they are conventional maybe they are very advanced maybe they are uh, vertical cultivation or maybe they are like uh, hydroponics aeroponics geoponics whatever is the cultivation method and system and whatever is the crop whatever is the terrain whatever is the uh, cultivation conditions or climatic conditions or soil conditions in respect of all these things our technology and this particular formulation is going to support the farmer to harvest double yields and also that of with the highest quality i can say it is double quality standards you can just see the appealing features like color shape size and you can also check the quality measurements by means of Uh, laboratory through laboratory it's for its nutritional values well bred characteristic constants of gradation as well as the including the storage life if it is uh, having a storage life of 2 days we can 100% assure that it can stay it can be stored for another one week without any damage without any specific treatment or without any specific uh, uh, additional uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, obligation of any other may, uh, storage the chemicals simply the storage life also will be upgraded uh, at least by three times for it, uh, from its natural uh, storage levels to three times it can be upgraded so farmer will be benefited to produce the quality pro- uh, not only the quantity of produce but also the quality produce that supports the 
healthy food security, not just mere food security, which is now highly toxified and damaging the health of end consumers by many means, right, from cancers to organ failures, everybody is suffering more of the food toxicity uh, when compared to any other uh, reasons. So this food toxicity also can be reduced with this single product because we deployed a technology in this particular vinegar crop that is called uh, molecular toxic toxic molecular expulsion TME technology by making the plant body to eliminate the toxins which are all getting deployed in the end produce uh, before we harvest it. I so, request a uh, request from Akarji to you know uh, close it so that we can start. Thank you, sir. Sure, sir. You gave me an opportunity. I am very thankful. But yeah. uh, I am assuring the farming world of our yeah. under Indian yeah. to utilize this technology and get the benefit instantly in their very first crop itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, by every means, I meant to say right from uh, production to uh, agriculture sustainability. Yeah. So this is my promise and this is what we are uh, offering the farming world of uh, on yeah. India uh, with the kind blessings of our, all your people and uh, great uh, Modiji. Thank you for all uh, the members as well as uh, for the opportunity and for the right from the beginning. Thank you. Uh, Thank uh, you. Sir, our, uh, yeah, yeah, our um, the Ravinder Dubeji is very much interested and he also tested the product. He witnessed the results and then only he invited me for this uh, conference. Thanking you all, sir. Once again, I'm um, very thankful to every uh, one of uh, our organization and this particular meeting. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, Prabhakar Ji. I call you. You say that whatever it may be, whatever it may be, you double the yield. You know, that is the yeah. instant man. Instant man for the agriculture. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's Most really welcome, nice. sir. With really all your nice. blessings. <laughs> so, uh, with this, in fact, uh, the general uh, this, you know, presentations we end. Now, we go for question-answer sessions. And uh, uh, I would say that, you know, our team has noted down some questions from the people. And uh, I can see uh, Kauri Ji uh, uh, wanted to have some question. Uh, uh, Kamla Nand Kauri Ji, can we, can we, uh, are you there, sir? Yes, yes, I already sent him in writing. My greatest okay. concern is the replication of good models and less yes. and less dependent on the government. That is what I wanted to good models, wherever they are, can be mm -hmm. market so we can have a network. And for that, I wanted you to consider having a regular platform for sure. marketing of these good practices and networking. Thank yes, you. Sir. I did. Thank you, sir. I request my team, you know, to note it down also the suggestions which are coming from the, our honorable members. So we should have the first suggestion coming as a regular meeting for uh, basically interconnecting all these people. Okay. I, I see that Sanjay ji was raising his hand. Sanjay ji, you next question. Yeah, so the, the, you know, this information is absolutely amazing. You know, for example, Nikhil and Mr. Prabhakar ji, how do we get in touch with them for really trialing out or buying the solution which they have? That was my question. That we will, that we will have nice, don't worry. Sir, uh, I will, I'm ready to provide you whatever are the number of samples you need, either for testing or for demonstration. Uh, they are readily available, sir. Just with a call through our, um, I mean to yeah. say, with the yeah, I'll everything. take your contact from Dubeji. Thank you. Sure, yeah, sir. Okay, coming to the next question. Uh, team, what is the next question you have with uh, you? Sudhanshu? I think uh, there is a question by Mr. Dr. Vivek. Uh, so, Dr. Vivek, are you there? Because many people have left. So, uh, anyway. So, uh, the, from the people who are present, you know, uh, let us... Uh, here from them if there are any questions. Sir, any link to the presentation or how we can get in touch? Uh, we, we have recorded it and uh, we will definitely uh, post the link, you know, uh, for the recorded uh, version. Where it will be posted? Uh, when you mean to say or where? Where? Well, uh, you have to share your uh, contact, in fact, email ID or whatever, then we have to send it, you know. 
so uh, you you note down in fact the uh, you, you came through whom through some person you know like uh, otherwise yeah. we, we just give you we just give you the uh, email id we, uh, we will email, uh, email we will email at uh, their emails okay you no but uh, we need to have his email id are you note down our email id okay just putting it here ravi it's very simple ravi dubey 001 at the rate gmail okay this is the email id i mean this could be a simple and uh this thing so just note it down and you can send it you please huh? okay and the whatsapp number Here is the WhatsApp number. Like right? this, also you can note down so that you know we get. Okay. Okay. So uh, Amit ji, you have some question? No, I I don't have any question pertinent to the present program. I have okay. some point to raise which I will like to uh, say something at the end of this program. So if okay. you permit me, I am really thankful. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, and. Uh, any more questions at the moment cuz we would like to have uh, okay amit ji you put your point then we will have uh, uh, two points from professor jp sharma ji our vice chancellor from uh, jk shere kashmir so uh, yeah amit ji sir excellent program in fact we are uh, we were in constant touch when you are planning to have this kind of program I have some few suggestion the for future uh, of. Uh, uh, may uh, I uh, ask a question in the meanwhile? Ah, bully, bully, yeah, please, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have a question with uh, uh, J P Sharma ji. Uh, a lot of schemes were mentioned when he was uh, giving his presentation. Right. Mm. Uh, how are they uh, actually? Uh, how do they reach the farmers? What is being done about that? Uh, yeah, many, yes, sir. many schemes have been launched very recently, like FPO. FPO, we have the target of 10,000 FPO in the next five years. So actually it has launched only this year, last one year. So things are picking up. 50 FPOs, for example, we have established in the state of JNK. If you talk about the Kisan credit card, 1.68 lakh crores rupees has been dispersed. If you talk of electronic market, ENAM, many lakhs crores of rupees business has been taken and 1,000 Mondays has been linked through this, this system. So things are picking up. Okay. And okay. Uh, last year, 1 lakh crores rupees under Art Nirbhar Bharat was allocated for infrastructure development at farm gate. 10,000 crores rupees have been already availed by the farmers. Okay. I have another question. Uh, there is a, a talk about doubling the farmer's income. Uh, this was in 2014-2015. Two questions are my question. फार्मर्स कौन हैं वो जो लेबरर्स काम करते हैं मान लीजिए मेरे पास प्लॉट है मैं अपने आप को फार्मर डिक्लेअर कर देता हूं और मेरे फार्म में लेबरर्स हैं उनकी इनकम को डबल करने की बात हो रही है या मेरी इनकम को डबल करने की बात हो रही है एक तो ये सवाल है और दूसरा सवाल ये है कि तब से लेके अब तक 7 साल हो गए तो इन्फ्लेशन भी हो चुका है तो डबल 2014 में जो थी इनकम उसको डबल करेंगे तो जो दाम है ऑलरेडी डबल हो चुके होंगे अगर चीजों के तो उसको डबल करेंगे तो क्या फायदा होगा क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ के लिए जो पैसे की जरूरत पड़ती है अगर उसको डबल करने की बात हो इसके ऊपर कोई विचार है या नहीं है या क्या सोचते हैं लोग बाग और तीसरा एक और सवाल है क्योंकि ये uh, दुबे जी ने एग्रीकल्चर रिलेटेड महारथियों को इकट्ठा कर लिया एक जगह 
कि ये फार्म लॉ के खिलाफ लोग बाग इतने थे क्यों और कौन इसको इसमें क्या कमी थी क्योंकि मेरे जितने भी मित्र हैं एक आध को छोड़ के सभी थे कि भाई इट इज अ गुड थिंग और मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है तब से कि इसमें क्या कमी रह गई कि उसको वापस लेना पड़ गया क्यों इतने लोग खिलाफ थे ये मैं लेकिन वो शायद थोड़ा पॉलिटिकल हो जाएगा अगर ना डिस्कस करना चाहें तो ना करें लेकिन पहले दो सवालों का अगर जवाब दें तो अच्छा होगा सर एक सेकेंड बिफोर प्रोफेसर शर्मा टेक्स मैं थोड़ा एक बात कहना चाहूंगा कि हम लोगों का बैकग्राउंड टेक्नोक्रैट्स का वी आर टेक्निकल पीपल एंड हम वी गो टू द बेसिक थिंग दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू एनहेंस द प्रोडक्शन इम्प्रूव द क्वालिटी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट रिड्यूस द वेस्टेज एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रसाइज पॉइंट वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू मेक डिफरेंस थ्रू टेक्निकल इंटरवेंशन now whoever is involved with that product at whichever level he he will get the benefit instead of talking that whether it is laborer whether it is kisan koi bhi ho usse hame koi fark nahi padta what we are doing we are cutting down the wastages we are auditing our process we are enhancing our process quality we are you know that's what you know like for example agar hum log uh, i think it's clear सो so, दूसरा और तीसरा जो सवाल है वो फार्म लाओ कर वाला दैट प्रॉब्ली इट इज नॉट द राइट फॉरम बी नो नॉट प्रोफेसर जेपी शर्मा जी आई थिंक आप बताएं ठीक हां फार्म लॉज की बात करेंगे तो मैं इस विषय पर नेशनल चैनल में बहुत बार बोल चुका हूं और वो बड़ा विषय है तो उसको आप कभी मुझसे फोन पे भी बात कर सकते हैं जितने भी नेशनल चैनल पे हैं उस पे मैं अपने वक्तव्य दे चुका हूं मैंने इस तरह से कहा था उसको कि अभी ठंड का मौसम चल रहा है मेरे पास कोट नहीं है और कोई आदमी कहता है कि भाई ये कोट और ले लो जो कपड़े पहने हुए हो आप वो तो पहने ही हुए हो उसको हम नहीं ले रहे आप ये कोट और पहन लो यदि आपकी इच्छा है तो कोट पहनिए नहीं इच्छा है तो कपड़े तो आप पहने हुए हैं यानी कि जो मंडी खत्म होने की बात कही गई थी उसमें ये था कि मंडियां तो रहेंगी एक आल्टरनेटिव आपको दिया जा रहा है बेटर और ये इकोनॉमिक्स का लॉ है जब बेटर अल्टरनेटिव होते हैं एक से ज्यादा खरीदार होते हैं एक से ज्यादा अवेनर्स होते हैं तो वहां बेटर प्राइस रियलाइजेशन होता है ये बहुत बार कह चुके हैं और जो ये कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग का था उसमें मेरा व्यू ये है और हमेशा मैं बोलता हूँ हर प्लेटफॉर्म पर बोलता हूँ कि हम बात कर रहे हैं स्पेशलिटी एग्रीकल्चर की लो वॉल्यूम हाई वैल्यू क्रॉप्स की बात कर रहे हैं जो अभी हमारे प्रैक्टिसनर्स जो इतने इंटरप्रीनर्स थे सबने वही बात की गेहूँ धान की बात किसी ने नहीं कही गेहूं धान से आपके आमदनी नहीं बढ़नी है लेकिन हमें वो चीज करनी है जो जिस परिस्थिति में हो सकती है तो यदि आपने लेवेंडर उगा लिया यहाँ जैसे यहाँ की बात करता हूँ ओलिव आपने उगा लिया आपने लेमन ग्रास उगा लिया तो वो छोटा किसान 0.56 हेक्टेयर का यहाँ किसान है वो प्रोसेसिंग प्लांट लगाएगा क्या उसकी ब्रांडिंग करेगा क्या उसकी पैकेजिंग करेगा क्या वो नहीं कर सकता उसकी मार्केटिंग करेगा क्या लेकिन यदि कोई ऐसा साधन बन जाता है जो अभी एक हमारे वक्ता ने भी कहा था कि हम इनको एलिमिनेट नहीं कर सकते चेन में से लोगों को तो यदि उनको लाते हैं हम एक इंडस्ट्री को बीच में लाते हैं जो एश्योर्ड करता है कि आप एलोवेरा उगाइए मैं इसको इस रेट पे खरीदूंगा और ये पहले भी था लेकिन उसमें इम्प्रूवमेंट किया गया फार्मर्स के हित के लिए तो उसमें कोई बुराई नहीं है और इनफॉर्मली ये चीजें हो भी रही है तो दूसरा ये था तीसरा था वो स्टॉक्स रखने के विषय में तो ये सारी चीजें मैं पहले कह चुका हूँ और आपको डिटेल में चाहिएगा तो मैं अपना आर्टिकल भेज दूंगा कभी आपसे फोन पर बात करूँ रहा फार्मर की बात मैंने आपको बताया कि 23 परसेंट ऐसे किसान हैं उनको किसान की कैटेगरी में रखा जाता है जिनके पास 200 सौ गज की जमीन है ऐसे हमारे पास तेईस किसान है अब उन लोगों के लिए कैसी खेती होनी चाहिए अभी बात हुई थी एरोपेनिक्स की सोयलेस फार्मिंग की हाइड्रोपोनिक्स की वर्टिकल फार्मिंग की टेरेस फार्मिंग की अब इन चीजों पे वैसे पे बात चल रही है स्मार्ट एग्रीकल्चर की आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की यानी इतनी जो कम जमीन है उसमें किस तरह की खेती की जाए कि जो उसकी फार्मर है या आदमी उसकी लाइवलीहुड सिक्योर की जाए पहले इन तरह की बातें नहीं होती थी हाइड्रोपोनिक्स पे हमारे यहाँ काम हो रहा है पचास किसानों के यहाँ हाइड्रोपोनिक्स का हम लगवा चुके हैं अब रूफ टॉप फार्मिंग पे हम हल्दी पचास हजार महिलाओं को जोड़े हैं जिसमें रूफ टॉप फार्मिंग करा रहे हैं उनके प्रोसेसिंग सेंटर लगा रहे हैं उनको मार्केटिंग से लिंकेज कर रहे हैं तो खेती में जो टेक्निकल परिवर्तन आ रहा है टेक्नोलॉजी का परिवर्तन आ रहा है वो इसी चीजों को देखते हुए कि हमारा किसान बहुत छोटा है 
अब मान लीजिए एक कैनाल यहाँ कैनाल होता है पांच बज का उसमें जो आप गेहूं धान की खेती करेंगे तो आपको पांच हजार भी नहीं मिलेंगे लेकिन ऐसे किसान हैं जो मछली पालन कर रहे हैं और हमने लगवाए हैं उनको एस सी कैटेगरी के किसान हैं इनके पास बहुत कम जमीन है उसमें एक कैनाल में वो जो है आपका दो लाख रुपए का इनकम दे रहे हैं तो हमें जरूरत इस चीज की है जैसे पंजाब हरियाणा है वहां बड़ी खेती है तो वहां उनसे ये कहें कि इन चीजों को करिए तो मुश्किल है दूसरा हमने एक इनिशिएटिव लिया है रेप्लीकेशन ऑफ फार्मर लेड इनोवेशन अप स्केलिंग एंड आउट स्केलिंग ऑफ फार्मर लेड इनोवेशन जो भी जो लास्ट वक्त आते उन्होंने भी अपनी बात कही थी कि जो ऐसे मॉडल हैं उनको रेप्लीकेट कैसे किया जाए ऐसे मॉडल ऑलरेडी हैं चार लाख रुपए पर हेक्टेयर के दस लाख रुपए पर हेक्टेयर पंद्रह लाख उसी परिवेश में उसी रिसोर्स में उन्हीं इन्वायरमेंट में तो अब कोशिश ये हो रही है उन फार्मर लेड इनोवेशन को आउट स्केल और अप स्केल कैसे किया जाए अब जो इनकम की आपने बात कही हमने गवर्नमेंट ने जो अशोक दलवाई जी की भी बात यहाँ हुई थी सात पॉइंट इसमें बनाए थे पहले तो प्रोडक्टिविटी बढ़ाना हाईटेक एग्रीकल्चर जिसमें जितनी भी बातें यहाँ हुई उन सबको ला दूसरा कॉस्ट ऑफ कल्टीवेशन कम करना यदि कॉस्ट ऑफ कल्टीवेशन कम हो जाती है तो बिना प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाए भी आमदनी बढ़ सकती है और उसके लिए जो हमने अल्टरनेटिव एग्रीकल्चर है स्पेशली दो हमारे इनपुट हैं जो मेजर हैं एग्रीकल्चर में एक वाटर है एक फर्टिलाइजर है फर्टिलाइजर यूज इफिशियंसी हमारी बहुत कम होती थी थर्टी थ्री वाटर वेस्ट होता था अब हमने उसमें जो है उसको बढ़ाने के लिए जो यहाँ बात हो रही थी स्प्रिंकल एरिगेशन ड्रिप इरीगेशन इनको कैसे लागू किया जाए स्पेशल हम बढ़ावा से सिंचाई योजना प्रधानमंत्री की लागू हुई है उसमें ये सारे कंपोनेंट हैं दूसरी बात हो रही है फर्टिलाइजर फर्टिलाइजर यूज एफिशियंसी भी थर्टी टू परसेंट है अब उसके लिए आपने सुना होगा पेपरों में पढ़ा होगा नैनो फर्टिलाइजर हमने निकाला है जो नैनो फर्टिलाइजर है जो एक बैग की जरूरत होती थी वहां अब एक बॉटल से 500 सौ एम की एक बोतल से उसे कैरी करने में इजी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन में इजी उसकी कॉस्ट कम तीसरी चीज जो यहाँ बात की थी संजय जी ने बड़े दुख की बात है जो चीजें कही थी बहुत सारी चीजें कंट्री को भी शोभा नहीं देती कंट्री के हिसाब से भी उसमें कहा गया था न्यूट्रिशन पे बात की थी सबको पता है माल न्यूट्रिशन है ये है लेकिन उन्होंने जर्नी की बात नहीं की इंडिया की कि कितनी हमारी जो सक्सेसफुल जर्नी रही है इंडिया की उसको अप्रिशिएट नहीं किया वो मैं अभी बोलूंगा उसमें माल न्यूट्रिशन में क्या है ये प्रॉब्लम सिर्फ अवेलेबिलिटी की नहीं है एक्सेसिबिलिटी की भी है अफोर्डेबल की भी है अवेलेबिलिटी की भी है और सबसे ज्यादा अवेयरनेस की है लोगों को ये नहीं पता क्या खाना चाहिए अब हम इस पे जो है जो काम हो रहा है साइंस में वो हो रहा है ब्रीडिंग फॉर न्यूट्रिशन ब्रीडिंग फॉर प्रोडक्शन नहीं ब्रीडिंग फॉर न्यूट्रिशन की कि न्यूट्रिशन कार्ड की हमारी बढ़ाई जाए इस पर हम मिलेट्स पे बात कर जिनको हम कोदो कुटकी सामा चौलाई इन सब को जो भूल चुके थे अब उन पर हमारा एक पूरा इंस्टीट्यूट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मिलेट और उसमें प्रधानमंत्री जी और हमें शाह जी सभी ये गए थे अभी वहां पे एक लॉन्च हुआ था पल्स पे भी काम हो रहा है जो हमारी पल्स देखिए यात्रा को हमारी को देखिए पांच साल पहले सेवनटीन मिलियन टन होता था पल्स का आज हमारा चौबीस मिलियन टन है जो हम जो म्यांमार जैसे कंट्री से मंगाते थे आज हमारी वो स्थिति नहीं है ये हमें सेटिस्फाई होना चाहिए कितने कंट्रीज को हम क्या चीज भेज रहे हैं तो ये मुझे लगभग चौथा जो पॉइंट था जो हमने योजना बनाई थी सरकार ने इनकम बढ़ाने के लिए प्रोसेसिंग एंड वैल्यूएडिशन जिनकी कई वक्ताओं ने बात की कि 15 से 20 परसेंट यानी 60 मिलियन टन हम वेस्ट कर रहे हैं जो ऑस्ट्रेलिया की प्रोडक्शन से ज्यादा है इसको कैसे हम कम करें इस पर हमारा पूरा जोर है जो एफ और जो वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट ये सारी चीजें उसी को ऊपर रही है चौथा चीज थी हमारी क्लाइमेट रेसिलेंट एग्रीकल्चर स्मार्ट एग्रीकल्चर को हम बढ़ावा कैसे दें और लास्ट में हमारा था डाइवर्सिफिकेशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर जो बहुत छोटे किसान हैं गेहूं धान से उसका नहीं होना है फ्लोटिकल्चर की हम बात करें हॉर्टिकल्चर की हम बात करें मेडिसिनल प्लांट की हम बात करें फिशरीज की हम बात करें डेयरी की हम बात करें जैसे जम्मू का मैंने बताया डेयरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट है एक किसान कुलभूषण खजूरिया उसके घर में गया एक एकड़ जमीन है आधे में डेयरी करता है पिछहत्तर एनिमल है लास्ट ईयर का उसकी जो इनकम थी तीस लाख रुपए थी चालीस पचास हजार रुपए का डेली खुद बेचता है बाकी लोगों से कलेक्ट करता है बाईस बाईस लाख रुपए की उसकी इनकम जो थी वर्मी कंपोस्ट की थी आज वो शहर वो घी भी बना रहा है पनीर भी बना रहा है तीन उसके आउटलेट जम्मू में है उसने मिल्क ए भी शुरू कर दिया है एनिमल फीड भी बना रहा है ये है इंटरप्रीनरशिप डॉक्टर और यदि एक एकड़ जमीन में किसान होगा तो उसकी मदद नहीं लगता बीस हजार रुपये भी नेट इनकम हो सकती है लेकिन वो लाखों में कमा रहा है अब हम बात कर रहे हैं कि इनको कैसे हम रेप्लीकेट करें यहाँ एक परवाज स्कीम चली है जो बात हो रही थी मार्केट से लिंकेज की यहाँ पे 
पेरिसेबल कम्युनिटी है हॉर्टिकल्चर कम्युनिटी है सेफरन है एप्पल है एप्रिकॉट ये सारी चीजें वर्ल्ड ये सब चीजों को कैसे भेजे बर्वाज स्कीम जम्मू कश्मीर इस इसमें यूटी ने शुरू की है उसके अंतर्गत कोई भी किसान अपनी पेरिसेबल कम्युनिटी दिल्ली में भेजना चाहता है पुणे में भेजना चाहता है मद्रास में भेजना चाहता है हैदराबाद में भेजना चाहता है अट्ठाईस रुपए में एक किलो सेम डे भेज सकता है और उसमें भी उसको ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सब्सिडी मिलेगी एक सौ उनतीस रुपए में दुबई भेज सकता है अपना माल उसको कितनी सब्सिडी मिलेगी अब पुणे में एक सौ साठ रुपए है एप्पल का रेट यहाँ साठ रुपए है उसने बीस रुपए दे भी दिए उसको और गोयर के साथ में एमओ किया है बीस रुपए दे भी दिए तब भी उसको जो अस्सी रुपए का एक किलो पे फायदा है तो ये चीजें चल रही हैं धीरे धीरे पैक हाउसेस बन रहे हैं प्रोसेसिंग सेंटर बन रहे हैं लेकिन ये कहना कि इस देश में सिस्टम कुछ नहीं कर सकता इंडिविजुअली कर सकता है दैट आई डोंट एग्री यहाँ हम जो इकट्ठे हुए हैं यहाँ एक दूसरे को कन्वर्जेंस के लिए इकट्ठे हुए शेयरिंग की स्ट्रेंथ के लिए इकट्ठे हुए हैं ये सिस्टम को के बी के सात के हैं एक के बी के साथ में दस हजार गाँव है दस हजार एक के बी के में पांच लोग अधिकारी होते हैं दस हजार गांव हैं, उसकी रीच कितनी हो सकती है जो साहब ने बताया था संजय जी के दो हजार दो हजार नहीं है वो सात सौ है और सात सौ की जो है सात लाख गांव हैं, उनको कवर करना है और ये कहें कि यूनिवर्सिटी कुछ नहीं की सिक्सटी सेवन आज हम फिफ्टी मिलियन टन से तीन सौ साठ टन कैसे पहुंच गए जमीन उस समय वन मिलियन हेक्टेयर थी और आज जमीन वन मिलियन हेक्टेयर है जमीन कम हुई है हमारी सात गुना कैसे प्रोडक्शन बढ़ गया ये फार्मर्स का ये वैज्ञानिकों का ये पॉलिसी सपोर्ट का है हाँ आपके सिस्टम में फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी है एक लिमिटेड एरिया में बिजनेस ओरिएंटेशन में आप करते हैं तो वो चीजें हो सकती हैं सरकारी तंत्र में अपने हिसाब से होती हैं हम चीजों को मोल्ड नहीं कर सकते लेकिन ये कहना कि कोई तरक्की नहीं हुई जब हम गाँव में थे गेहूँ की रोटी उसके घर में बनती थी जो बहुत संपन्न आदमी होता था मोटरसाइकिल आती थी तो आधा गाँव देखने आता था आज हम कहाँ हैं हमने कितनी उन्नति की है डिवलर से शुरू हुआ था एक एक जो पूसा संस्थान ने बीज डेवलप किया था गेहूं का डिवलर से ढाई ढाई सौ ग्राम सौ सौ ग्राम मिलता था उसे हम डिवलर से बोते थे वो मल्टीप्लाई होकर आज हम कहाँ पहुंच गए हैं तो वी शुड रिकॉग्नाइज दी कंट्रीब्यूशन एंड दी जर्नी ऑफ इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर एंड देन वी हैव टू वी हैव टू कंट्रीब्यूट टूगेदर हम सबके साथ लेके चलना है कन्वर्जेंस होना है वाटर टाइट कंपार्टमेंट में काम नहीं करना एक दूसरे को क्रिटिसाइज नहीं करना यहाँ हम एक दूसरे से लर्न करने और एक दूसरे को सपोर्ट करने के लिए बैठे हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू लीड सर यू हैव गिवन वेरी इलेबरेट स्कंद जी आई थिंक दिज आंसर सो जी आई सी दैट somebody is raising his hand please go ahead with the question i am okay the who 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 i am okay kiska ye hai i those who are okay they are okay <laughs> no issue next question no uh, uh, this is the raised hand okay so i am okay please go ahead with your question I think is not there. Not there. So I would say that it has been a very informative, open heart discussion, and it has been a learning platform for all of us. And uh, of course, you know, uh, this was first endeavor. Uh, can from you from can you hear now? Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you you have a question. Please go ahead. no i i don't exactly have a question i have a, i won't say suggestion it's a, i am basically from a steel plant and a steel plant has a unit which is known as basic oxygen furnace which produces lot of slag now this practice was started in japan by nippon steel and now it has been picking up in china and russia and somewhere this thing there is a slag which is known as ld slag or bof slag which has lot of nutrition value i can share the document with mr jp sharma and some exercise was done by indian council of agricultural research about 4 years back after that i think has happened in that tata steel was involved and uh, jsw that is jindal steel works were involved this is a very cheap source of improving the <coughs> reducing the alkalinity of the soil which improves the fertility also it is highly useful for rice 
there are documentation available on this work lot of work has been done nippon steel ka this is one of the major points in their sustainable development goals sir, to you please please share sir please share uh, so sir jp sharma will be yes. uh, Sir, Please. are you are you done? Are you are still? Sorry. I am done. I am done. I am done. Okay. okay. So, sir, I think uh, J P Sir. Sir, मैंने जो अपना ये बहुत अच्छा initiative रविन जी आपने लिया है और इसमें सबसे अच्छी बात है कि ये इसमें practitioners हैं, multi stakeholders हैं. इसमें जो लोग कर रहे हैं अपने लिए वो भी हैं, समाज के लिए कर रहे हैं वो भी हैं, research कर रहे हैं. वो भी है और अभी आपने निकी कुमार झा का यहाँ प्रेजेंटेशन कराया था अपॉर्चुनेटली वो हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी से ही लेके गए थे इस मोहम्मद को हमें आगे चलाना है कमल टोरी जी ने जैसा कहा उस ग्रुप को एक अच्छे ढंग से अच्छे ऑब्जेक्टिव से इसको आगे चलाइएगा एक बार ये इवेंट होने से शायद उतनी चीजें नहीं हो पाएंगी लेकिन इसको हमें कंटिन्यू करना है विद दिस वर्ड्स आई रियली थैंक यू ईच वन ऑफ यू थैंक यू थैंक यू डीड सर एंड आई एम ओके ने जो एक सुझाव दिया था वो स्टील प्लांट के बारे में आई आई जी दो किया दो जी आई थिंक आई कैन आई विल इंक्वायर एंड आई विल टेक हिज हेल्प इज रियली श्योर समथिंग मॉडल Sure, uh, sir. Sure. Can I speak, Prabhat Kumar ji? Yes, yes. Why not? Sir, I am aware of that. In fact, India has, uh, to my knowledge, some twenty-six types of soil. So this test has to be done for. It cannot be sub dhan by specialty. Mm. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Trials have to be done, but a, a trial was started by ICAR along with Tata Steel and JSW, but that has been shelved. I don't know why. this is a potential i agree with you you cannot go blindly these slags have heavy metals which may be harmful one case has been reported in somewhere in uh, netherland and somewhere where it harmed the soil otherwise actually it has been you actually you see what i told you know it is a good practice if you are bring going to bring something like i was not actually deliberately i have not coated the heavy metals if you see most of the crops are taking their food from the soil heavy metals you know particularly the lead is a biggest problem for the agricultural produce it we cannot actually reduce it and particularly if leafy vegetables we are growing they become a siphoner it's become a it comes in the you know our food chain and leads to the cancer that's why actually i was not going mm -hmm. to throw a light over that but i told you a good research is required how if sir really what i'm telling you that everything is having you know potential but we have to research it because we are going to give it as a human diet mm -hmm. so that we have to see actually point well taken pravaj ji and uh, i think uh, i am okay also you are right that we need to do some more both both i both of you agree for that definitely uh, i request professor jp sharma ji to consider and uh, look into okay. it okay sir so uh, uh, Sir. I have lot of work which has been done all over the world. Uh, lead does not come in steel at all. There are other elements which come, and it is a proven technology. In fact, they also do it. They mix with the uh, this our guy ka gober khad and this thing. That that's what Nippon Steel has done to reduce its uh, harmful effect. So all those information I will share with Mr. J P Sharma. Sure. I can also share with Mr. Prabhat Kumar. it is and sure. it's encouraging to know that some work has been done in this life but what i was aware that icar i found an article about 5 years back they had some committee was formed by the government after that everybody is sleeping because somebody no has problem. to take somebody has to take initiative and go ahead there, 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 acha there, there, hai acha hai ki uh, sharma ji usko uh, dekhenge aur uh, uske baad uh, kaam aage badh sakta hai yeah right you are right yeah, skanji yeah. 
और आई एम ओके जी मुझे मालूम है कि आप कौन है जी मेरा नाम विकास है सर आई एम विकास सर विकास सर विकास सर आप मेरे सीनियर हैं तो आपकी आवाज तो मैं पहचान ही लूंगा नहीं सुन रहे क्या कर विकास जी फ्रॉम आई टी कानपुर इनफैक्ट पास आउट आई थिंक इन सेवेंटी मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन टाटा ग्रुप टाटा स्टील इन ऑल दैट सो वट एवर यू सेज है रीजन बिहाइंड इट डेफिनेटली प्रोफेसर जे पी शर्मा इज ईगरली एग्रीइंग टू लुक इन ओके आई आई हैव सम मोर सजेशंस आई विल शेयर विद हिम श्योर सर श्योर सर टू इट्स अ लॉन्ग टर्म थिंग्स वेयर यू कैन इंप्रूव स्पेशली द इनकम ऑफ द फार्मर आई विल जस्ट वन सेंटेंस अ न्यू कांसेप्ट हैव कम व्हिच इज डिमांड ड्रिवन एग्रीकल्चर इंस्टेड ऑफ सप्लाई ड्रिवन एग्रीकल्चर इट नीड्स लॉट ऑफ लुक इनटू बिकॉज़ टुडे व्हाट हैपेंस व्हाई द प्राइसेस कम डाउन बिकॉज़ यू प्रोड्यूस मोर देन व्हाट द मार्केट कैन टेक देयर आर वेज देयर आर वेज आउट which are in in fancy especially by ibm and other companies okay, which predict how what will be the crop now it's upon us how do we implement it because just like that if you go and someone don't grow the crop because it will not nobody will agree it has uh, uh, challenges but it's a new coming technology for example in israel uh, for per sadik they are earning 2 lakh but india is earning 30000 the main difference is demand driven agriculture you produce only that which market can take instead of so produce sir so these are these are mongeri lal ke hasin sapne so i don't know how for, because when you go to field there are practical problems sir. you just can't uh, this thing because so we yeah. need we need to work we need to work the, and definitely as the kamal bhai similarly similarly i have one more idea if you give me a minute all the crops i was talking to uh, one of our uh, group members also i think who's looking after mangoes and all if you go on uh, this uh, ali baba you will find a, 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 a gadget which segregates tomatoes aapka cucumbers potato anything the these malls and all take the uh, uh, crop and they just segregate and one they will set at 60 rupees the other is at 40 rupees nothing has been done no value addition just mm-hmm. sorting mm-hmm. this sorting can be done at apmc or in the village in japan they are doing it at village level in fact this was designed by a japanese student way back is micros microsoft microsoft advertise in their uh, platform so these are the things just sorting sorting of the crop can make a difference to vikas vikas ji you are very right the changing face of indian agriculture through agri tech i am very happy to see that the iitians are taking interest in agriculture we can talk this talk can go long you know if you will find there is a saying bake in india yeah, that is yeah. bake in india can solve the problem not there only no ba- problem bake in value because <coughs> production centric this production centric approach we have to change to the value chain centric Mm-hmm. and the uberization and amulization there are two words that can solve the problem but need a comprehensive approach and i will i will tell you in uh, in a seconds vietnam focus cluster approach morakkosh province led plants maha grapes cluster and chili pp in andhra pradesh these four models if anybody can read the challenges we have talked about it is going to become a opportunity one last I point traveled across the india mm-hmm. across the europe i am telling you this is all challenges i was listening these are challenges are opportunity for us marginal are marginal and small farmers they are the backbone for any any you know country we are we, we have to compare ourselves with the china if you see in the china what is the land holding it's a 0.7 hectare if you see the vietnam this is a, mar, a small and marginal farmers if you see thailand ba- bangkok they are marginal and small farm and they are the more you know able to grow crops with the intensity more diversities are maintained and diversities are the backbone of resilience only thing is that the infrastructure we have to provide talking about the ai artificial intelligence black learning blockchain any technology you talked about now people are working over that and by uberization that can reach to the farmer pit it is my belief i have done it in three villages in the maharashtra through my rahuri that is one university where the first model we have developed through the ai and iot based irrigation system so there are a lot of you know 
success stories i can talk about but i think time is limited we will, I, and who those who are interested uh, my uh, contact uh, contact is there with duveji anybody can contact i'll give you the model sure. my last Any model sir. Sir, sure, my, sir, sure, sure. my last point, sir. My last point. The last, real last. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because because of my assignments, I have been to China from 2004 to 2006. Practically whole one year I spent in China. I have been to interiors of China, and I have seen that. Okay. What what Rahul Gandhi talked about, the potato chips factory is right in the field where the potato is there. So instead of transporting potatoes to a chip factory. the finished chips are transported just think of the uh, supply chain and what secondly the farmers have a uh, some kind of a cooperative where the wheat is produced by the farmer themselves and through blockchain they share it right sir so thank you i think with this we uh, we would like to say that we had a wonderful session today which has really opened lot of opportunities and the technocrats have been really and who was stirred by our motivated motivating is uh, the what you call suggestions solutions and uh, you know exposing the problem so all are important you know for us to uh, become active and we will try to take it forward i request uh, our senior member skand bhargav ji to propose a vote of thanks uh, thank you uh, ravindra dubey ji अब पहली चीज तो यह है कि मैं शुक्रगुजार हूं जेपी शर्मा जी का संजय विद्यार्थी जी का कार्तिक जी का कमलानंद जी का निर्मल अग्रवाल जी का निकी कुमार जी का प्रभाकर जी का सब ने बहुत बढ़िया ज्ञान प्रदान किया है हम लोग को जहां शर्मा जी ने हम लोग को सरकार क्या कर रही है उसके बारे में बहुत डिटेल में बताया और वहीं पर संजय विद्यार्थी जी ने बिजनेस मॉडल के तरीके से हम लोग कैसे आगे बढ़ सकते हैं उसमें बहुत अच्छा कंट्रीब्यूशन दिया आ, मुझे एक आखिर में एक डर लिए लग रहा है कि हमारे निक्की कुमार झा जी कहीं प्रभाकर जी से डर तो नहीं गए होंगे क्योंकि प्रभाकर जी ने कहा है कि वो लॉन्गिटिव लॉन्जिविटी बढ़ा देंगे सात गुना तो फिर प्रभा निक्की कुमार जी की जो इन्वेंशन है उसका क्या होगा खैर जोक्स अपार्ट इट वॉज अ वंडरफुल सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक दुबे जी वंस अगेन फॉर हैविंग दिस वंडरफुल ग्रुप टुगेदर और बहुत मजा आया और मेरे जैसे जो लोग हैं जो कि सिर्फ ज्ञान प्राप्त करने के लिए बैठे थे उनको आई एम श्योर बहुत मजा आया होगा साथ में अगर आगे चल हम लोग Uh, अगर कोऑपरेटिव फार्मिंग जैसी चीज की तरफ बढ़ सके क्योंकि हम लोग के पास लैंड तो नहीं है लेकिन अगर हम लोग uh, कुछ लोग जो इंटरेस्टेड हो uh, उस तरफ जाना चाहें और उसके लिए अगर हेल्प uh, आप लोगों की तरफ से मिल सके तो मैं चाहूंगा कि उस तरफ भी कोई uh, कोई uh, कोई काम किया जाए शायद रविंद दुबे जी उसमें आगे बढ़ा सकते हैं इस बात को इसी के साथ मैं सबका धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा धन्यवाद थैंक यू इंडीड सर थैंक यू इंडीड एंड दो तीन अभी तो क्लोज हो गया है लेकिन एक दो बातें कहना ये चाहेंगे जैसे कि आपने सर प्रपोज किया तो इसमें प्रोफेसर जेपी शर्मा जी की लीडरशिप में और भाई कमलानंद तावड़ी जी के यू नो आइडियाज को लेकर के और सबको जोड़ करके एक कोई एक्टिविटी शुरू करते एक नया और एक कॉन्फ्रेंस uh, रखते हैं लेट से आफ्टर ए मंथ और सो एंड देन फ्यू थिंग्स विल कम आउट संजय जी इनफैक्ट हैज गिवन लॉट ऑफ इनपुट्स वी नीड टू बी यू नो डिस्कस्ड एंड यू नो ब्रॉट आउट इन टू ए सोल्यूशन फॉर्म जिससे कि जो लोगों की समस्याएं हैं वो रियली दूर हों और फार्मर्स की ट्रेनिंग मुझे जहां तक लगता है कि फार्मर्स की ट्रेनिंग वाला जो प्रश्न है ये सभी लोगों ने यूनिफॉर्मली उठाया है तो फार्मर्स की ट्रेनिंग पे हम लोग ध्यान देते हैं हमारे पास बहुत ज्ञान उपलब्ध है प्रभात जी कितना कर चुके हैं प्रोजेक्ट आई एम ओके अग्निहोत्री जी का इनका भी बहुत बढ़िया इनफैक्ट एक्सपीरियंस रहा है सो एंड आई कैन सी 
अमित गोस्वामी जी स्माइलिंग इनके पास ही इतने खजाने हैं लेकिन आज वो बोले नहीं है कुछ तो एक हमारे बीच में चीफ साइंटिस्ट कौन थे उन्होंने भी कुछ नहीं बोला जरूर कुछ उनके पास होगा विचार चीफ साइंटिस्ट <laughs> अगर आप आई थिंक यू विल कम आउट विद मोर सजेशन सो दैट वी गेट इन इन फ्यूचर सो शुरू किया था उसी से समापन करते हैं कदाचना स्वदेश पूजते राजा विद्वान सर्वत्र पूजते विद्वान और राजन में कोई कंपैरिजन नहीं होता राजा तो अपनी पेरीफेरी में रहता है विद्वान सारी दुनिया में पूजा जाता है तो आपने इतने अच्छे विद्वान इकट्ठे कर लिए हम लोगों का बहुत मार्गदर्शन हुआ आशा रहेगी कि ये जो शुरुआत हुई है आगे तक बढ़े बस इन्हीं दो शब्दों के साथ सबको मैं प्रणाम करता हूँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अनिरोध जी आपका विशेष सहयोग रहा है आई टी टीम हमारे सुधांशु जी धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत बढ़िया आप लोगों ने मैनेज किया सभी के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद शशांक ने भी बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन दिया बैकग्राउंड दिया सर प्रोफेसर जे पी शर्मा जी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया सर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद संजय जी एवरीबॉडी संजय जी नमस्कार नमस्कार सर कृष्ण जी नमस्कार 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 एवरीबॉडी विद दिस वी क्लोज नाउ टीम कैन क्लोज इट Thank you, Deep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, dinner time. Yeah. Did you come here? Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Dinner. Dinner. Yeah. 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 Dinner. Yeah